And we're live. Welcome to the WAN Show, ladies and gentlemen. We've actually got a freaking ton of topics to get through today, so no preamble. We accidentally broke Intel's embargo for their 12th gen chips. We will talk about that. And of yes. course, a summary of the media coverage of the 12th gen. I will also be addressing some of the particularly ill-informed comments that were left on our video, criticizing our, um, our choices for how we <clears throat> decided to test the platform. Uh, I tried Dungeons and Dragons for the first time today. Yeah. So that was fun. We're yeah. going to talk about that. That's sort of a little bit not really that on topic. But You're what else we got? You're too many shout outs, man. You did three. No, I did you two. You took one of mine. I did two, two, two. The Intel 12th gen thing, including our flub. Yeah. And the Dungeons and Dragons thing. Oh, I thought you did something. Okay. Also, uh, Switch modder Gary Bowser pleads guilty, owes Nintendo $4.5 million. Oh. Big yikes. Also, we're going to talk about Linux stuff. We do that every week on the show now. Yeah, yeah. We don't actually ever release the videos. No. We just talk about the videos the that videos we are producing uh, in the background. Yeah. They take a long time to edit because I don't know about Luke, but my screen capture is a complete cluster. Mine's not actually. You know, for the first video, I actually uh, like numbered them for chronological chronological order and like titled each one of them so that they would know what was happening so it'd be easier for them to fit it into the thing. Yeah, mine's a little less organized than that. Yeah. Let's roll that intro. <laughs> this Bowser thing annoys me with how tech -like The show is brought to you by Spanning, MSI, and Ridge Wallet. We are going to jump right into um, the big oops that happened with our video review of Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs. Yeah, um, that's what I was, I was going to be like, oh, oh, no, you know, like, exactly. So... <laughs> What happened was the yeah. video was supposed to go live at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Thursday. And typically what we do is we upload our video and we set it to unlisted and then we set a scheduled publication time. Now, we also typically promote our new video releases on Twitter. And because this was at uh... 6 a.m., we scheduled a tweet that was supposed to go out at 6 a.m. at the same time that the video would flip live, pointing to the video. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the tool that we've been using to schedule our tweets, and I'm not going to name any names because who knows, there could have been some kind of user error involved. Maybe we entered our time zone wrong or something like that. Like maybe someone went in and made a change to the account and, and something got screwed up and it was our own fault. I, d I don't know. I actually do not know the details, but what I know is that later on that day, another scheduled tweet that we were going to send out went out many hours early. So somehow oh. our scheduled tweets were going out way early. So I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm glad that it wasn't any worse than it was because the tweet went out early while the video was unlisted. So it was viewable by people that had the link and the link was in the tweet. Yes. And then uh, Ed spotted it almost immediately, set the video to private, pulled the tweet, but that didn't prevent eagle-eyed viewers from ripping the video, yeah. um, capturing screenshots of all of the graphs and then reposting them. Um, which is very unfortunate. So basically what happened was our tweet scheduler bunged up, which could have been our fault. And we tweeted a link to an unlisted video. So there's a couple of different solutions that we've got to make sure this doesn't happen again. Uh, honestly, the people that I think are most affected by this are our fellow members of the media. That was really not something that we intended to do. We weren't trying yeah. to get the drop on anyone. Um, so what we're going to be doing moving forward is we are going to set embargoed videos to private rather than unlisted uh, when we want to schedule them to go live, if possible. I actually haven't looked into whether it still works that way, but what we will definitely not do is schedule tweets 
for uh, embargo lift. So we will just have to get up at 6 a.m. like everybody else and tell you guys all about the good news. So the big news in the tech industry this week was obviously Intel's 12th gen processors. They're codenamed named Alder Lake. They are finally available to buy on the LGA 1700 platform. The 8 plus 8 core Core i9-12900K delivers performance that sometimes bests AMD's Ryzen 9 5950X, despite having half of its 16 cores designated as efficiency cores. Um, and this unique architecture that Intel has here with eight per, up to eight performance and up to eight efficiency cores has resulted in some controversy around testing. So there's a, there's a couple of criticisms that were leveled at us over the way that we evaluated the Core i9-12900K. One of them was that we used Windows 11 for our testing. And we did provide some of the rationale in the video for why we used Windows 11. And the reason was that Windows 11 has an updated scheduler that is properly tuned to take advantage of the big little architecture of Alder Lake. Now, I know that some... Uh, people were upset about this because Windows 11 hasn't really reached any kind of critical mass in terms of market share at this point. But the other reason that did not make it into the video, because frankly, I felt like the reason that it wouldn't perform properly if we didn't use Windows 11 was enough. Uh, the other reason that we used is that it's not as simple as just looking at what's the dominant operating system and going, okay, let's test on that one. Because if someone is buying a brand new system today, the odds that they are going to choose Windows 11 over Windows 10 or anything else, especially for a gaming machine, and typically our reviews are more focused on gaming performance, are going to be much higher. So even though Windows 11's market share might be 3% or 5% or whatever, for people buying a brand new machine today, it will be markedly higher than that. So we felt that between making sure it's performing properly and trying to target what we think people buying Alder Lake CPUs are going to be using, that it made more sense to test with Windows 11. Is the concern there that, that people think the other CPUs are performing worse in okay. Windows 11? Now, there is some truth to that. So Windows 11 has had scheduler issues yeah. with AMD. The good news is that literally, I think like two days... I don't want to say how many days because I don't remember exactly when our chips arrived, but but days before we actually started our testing, AMD provided a chipset driver update and Microsoft pushed an update for Windows 11 that fixed the scheduler on AMD CPUs. Okay. But there was an issue. An issue <laughs> remained, okay? You could apply the fix and your performance would be fixed. But as was discovered by, I think, Hardware Unboxed might have been the first ones to bring this to light. If you change your CPU, if you swap it out, it can actually oh. degrade back to the pre-fixed performance. <sighs> now, it's not a guarantee that that's going to happen every time, as we discovered, because, yes, guys, we didn't mention it in the video because the bug did not affect us. But as we discovered, Anthony was able to swap CPUs, and all of our performance numbers still made sense. We didn't see just all of a sudden like uh, like absolutely tanked AMD performance numbers. Right. So that was uh, that was sort of the I think the main controversy that there was around in particular our video was our choice of Windows 11. But I stand behind it 100. percent I think that most people buying a brand new system today are going to install Windows 11. That's it's also just like how it works. The the 12. 12,000 series processors and Windows 11 were kind of hand in hand a bit, right? The new scheduler system and stuff. Yes. Intel was helping with that. I, I think at the very least, you would have to include Windows 11 benchmarks. Maybe doing both could have so been. So both would cool. have been interesting, but it's a lot of time. it would have. We already did, and this was, this was pre release, but we already took a look at gaming performance in Windows 10 versus Windows 11, found that it was not significantly different. So basically, we're just doubling our number of benchmark runs for what? To, to prove the point that it's not different. To prove the point that it's not different or to demonstrate that it is different with the 12900K, which we already know. And we made it clear that we recommend running Windows 11 with the 12900K. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then just don't do that. Just don't run Windows 10 with the 12900K, which might not appeal to you. Windows 11 is 
it's going Maybe through a some growing to pains. Maybe reason to not get the processor, yeah. Which is fine. You don't have to buy something on yeah. release date. Yeah. But you got to remember that this content is going to be there a year from now, two years from now. And I want to upload what is going to be the most relevant piece of content yeah. uh, evaluating the performance of this product If someone wants to buy a time. used 12900K in four years because they're still amazing because they probably will be, um, they'll probably be running Windows 11. Probably. So there was another sort of controversy. <laughs> um, Just one after the other. Yeah, the other the other controversy uh, was that we used DDR5, and this is one of those ones where every single time, it's like, tell me you're a fanboy without telling me you're a fanboy. Every single time, whether it's AMD, Intel, Nvidia. Apple, I don't care. Every time one of them has some kind of technological advantage over the other. All of a sudden, evaluating that product against some other one is now unfair. It's unfair. Linus, you can't compare the latest iPhone to the Android handsets on the market because it uses a 5 nanometer chip and those ones don't. Linus, you can't benchmark Intel with DDR5 because you're running AMD with DDR4. You need to benchmark Intel with DDR4 then. I the number the that, number that of that does muddy a bit the argument of the the future performance stuff though. Which slightly. one does? Uh because like AMD processors down the line will support DDR5. They will, but they'll be completely they'll different, be different processors, processors. Yeah. and we will test them with DDR5. Yeah, that's fair. Why would you ever? Yeah, never mind. I take it all back. So, so I mean, and and it's sometimes sometimes it gets really ridiculous. Um, I remember back when uh, AMD was using HBM memory in their GPUs, and Nvidia was still using a more conventional GDDR or something or other, and you'd like you'd you'd upload performance graphs demonstrating that. Sorry, AMD, in spite of your expensive, fancy memory, the NVIDIA card is, in fact, faster in applications X, Y, Z. And then you'd have people going, but you guys didn't, you guys didn't account for that AMD's got HBM. And I'm like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. What matters is how many dollars you hand to someone and how many FPSs you get back. Yeah, that ultimately is all that matters. And what we did was in the re I actually it's so funny because I've been around the block a few times. And as Anthony and I were sitting in script review for the Alder Lake review, I went through and I added not one, but two sort of p points, two spots in the script where I specifically acknowledged that DDR5 is significantly more expensive than DDR4 yeah. and that you have to consider the full platform cost when you're evaluating the value of a product. Which is like really high. <laughs> Just looking right now. It's super high. But the thing is, the reason that I phrased it the way that I did and the reason that I didn't go after DDR5 for being too expensive or whatever. For whatever did you is do because price performance? No, we couldn't because the thing is that DDR5 pricing is going to be probably incredibly volatile yeah. over the coming few months. But like any commodity item, because we've seen these changeovers happen now five times, like any commodity item, you're going to see that, that volume production of DDR4, volume production of DDR5, they're going to go like this. They're going to cross. And at some point, DDR5 will become the same price as DDR4, and then it will be cheaper. cheaper. And once again, we're, we're producing these reviews for the long term where we're evaluating, okay, in the context of what else was available on the market at the time, how does 12th gen perform? Did you show an example of 12th gen's performance uh, utilizing DDR5 versus DDR4? We didn't. So what we would like to do is a follow-up video. Okay. Uh, but what I had gotten guidance on ahead of time from memory manufacturers was that if you're running overclocked DDR4 versus overclocked DDR5, you are going to end up in very similar territory. Mm. Um, and it is possible that the platform will have more headroom with DDR5, but it's pretty 
it's pretty negligible. Wash. The yeah. only real reason, and I even, I even, sp- I remember adding this to the script as well. The only real reason to go for DDR5 would be if you want to perhaps buy into a memory technology that you'll be able to carry forward with you to another system more easily. Try to and, leave some slots open or something. Yeah. And to be clear, like I didn't make an argument for doing that, which I would never do. You should never buy system memory thinking this is an investment. <laughs> I am going to, this is, this is my memory. <laughs> I'm going to use this memory because the thing is the pricing, non-appreciating asset. the pricing only goes in one direction. The capacities only go in the other direction and the speeds only go in the same direction as the capacity. So you are far better off going for whatever is the best bang for the buck today, assuming that by the time you retire the system, you're just going to leave it in it. And it'll go to a relative or you could sell the whole thing complete on Facebook Marketplace or whatever the case may be. And you're probably going to go acquire new memory that's a better match because as we've seen, especially with Ryzen over the last few years, as these memory controllers have developed, faster and faster spec DDR4 has come out alongside it. And we've seen them kind of develop together and sort of help each other to continue to improve. And I suspect, especially because we're in the infancy of DDR5, that we're going to see the same thing. We're going to see tighter cast latencies. We're going to see higher speeds. We're going to see cost come down. All of this is going to happen. So we wanted to represent the platform as it will be moving forward and yeah, also and as it is today. I just, like, like you kind of mentioned, it probably doesn't even matter. Someone in Floatplane Chat uh, Zetharian said hardware in box has DDR4 and DDR5 numbers and the performance difference is almost negligible so yeah yep so um, apparently Dear Bauer has information showing the same thing so yeah who cares so in a massive surprise to nobody the super early new gen performs this happens with RAM all the time it happens every time yeah literally every single time yeah. we've gone to a new generation of DDR, the super mature, low cost last gen is very competitive with the immature high cost new gen. And the only reason to really buy the brand new one is because you want to have the brand new one for whatever, whatever reason. Um, Neo Cortez says, yeah, once once the timings start to tighten, uh, you'll start to see the difference. Yeah, and also once you see the speeds dramatically increase, you'll start to see the difference too. Like something that a lot of people I don't know if realize is that cast latencies are not measured in like nanoseconds. Like that's not actually a unit of time. That is a unit of cycles. Yeah. So when you have memory that has like that's that's one of the reasons actually that your that your cast latencies go up so much as we go through the uh, memory generations, but overall memory access latency isn't like double quadruple eight like sixteen x what it was with DDR one. It doesn't work that way because as the memory frequency goes up, you actually even though you have more cycles you're running at this much, much higher frequency per second. So the actual real time, like in fractions of a set, or not, let's avoid the word fractions, but in the actual time in seconds can end up very similar or even better once speeds ramp up enough. So that's a really important thing for people to understand because I see a lot of people looking at, oh, you've got like cast latencies of 36 to 40, even on high-end kits for DDR5. Well, okay, yeah, but it's also running at a much higher frequency than you'll see on DDR4. Yeah. Um, Horst, Horst says DDR5 is three times as expensive right now for the same capacity. Yeah, so I probably wouldn't uh, go that <clears throat> wouldn't go that route. Boop, boop, boom. Okay. Uh, what else did we want to talk about here? Uh, gaming performance. Great with Alder Lake. I am. I'm actually pretty surprised that Intel managed to so decisively take back the performance crown. But if I was the kind of Intel fan that's been crying for the last couple of years, I wouldn't necessarily get all you know swaggery about yeah. it right now because yeah. AMD has stuff I, I think is rumored to be hitting like first half of 2022 that should bring them fully competitive with Intel again. And AMD has already pointed out that they don't need efficiency cores 
in order to boost their core count to 16 on their consumer platform. So, man, it is going to be real interesting. And AMD already has an efficiency advantage. So they definitely have more levers to pull in terms of squeezing more out of these chips. Uh, yeah, our, we, we saw our Core i9 hitting as high as 96 degrees in Blender with an NHD yeah, 15. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a really hot chip. It's an NHD 15 really struggling to cool something down. It's like, that's a bit of a yikers. Well, part of the problem is that it's not just the thermal output, right? Like, this is a consumer chip. This is not a gigantic die. Like, one of the things that I think people probably don't realize unless they've used them is that just because you've got a super high core count chip, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's really, really difficult to cool. So AMD's Epic 64 cores, for example, are really easy to keep cool because the dies are not only like physically larger because there's 64 spread. freaking cores in the thing, but they're also spread out because yeah. of AMD's chiplet design for their last couple generations of chips. So what that means is that as long as you've got enough heat pipe and enough heatsink fin to deal with however many watts it is, the actual transfer of thermal energy between the CPU IHS and the bottom of the cooler is way, way more efficient, way faster. So when you've got this tiny die, this consumer die, all that heat is concentrated in one place. And the bottleneck becomes how fast you can move that heat across the base of the cooler before you can even send it up the heat pipes yeah. to start to dissipate it to the surrounding air. So that's one of the reasons that this chip is so freaking hot. MSI actually did, um, I don't, was it a live stream? I can't remember. I saw the slides from it anyway. They showed that um, there's actually two different dies for Alder Lake, depending on what the core configuration is. And they both have their own kind of um, slightly, slightly off uh, center. One of them's centered, and I think the other one's slightly off centered. They have their own hotspots, though, uh, which means that not it's not even the area of the die that you need to focus all of your cooling. It's actually that that particular part of the die where you need to focus almost yeah. all the cooling. So once you're hitting this thing crazy hard with like a blender render, that 96 degrees is because it can't move that heat out away from the hot spot of the die fast enough. Uh, anyway, the Core i9 really wasn't the star of the show for me. The 12600K, which is a $320 CPU that offers darn near top tier gaming performance while competing with the Ryzen 5 5600X for price, looks amazing. Now, AMD is clearly responding. So Micro Center has already apparently discounted the 5800X. Dun, da, 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 da. $299. To $299. Darn. Isn't competition great? <laughs> right? So here's the thing. Here's the thing. In pandemic times, too. Every time you see a Dang. price drop, every time you see a price drop, okay, unless it's on clearance, that means they could have sold it at that price before. <laughs> so this is one of the things that I get really, um, I don't know, I get really exasperated about. Intel does not have a clean history, okay? No. It's not like they've forever been the world's most consumer-centric, uh, you know, custom, customer-friendly, uh, competition-friendly, whatever, whatever it is you want to accuse them of, you could probably dig up some dirt. But don't imagine for a second that AMD is some kind of white knight, okay? They are a corporation beholden to their shareholders. If they can charge you $399.99 instead of $299.99, they will. AMD started the whole Extreme Edition FX bullcrap. Don't kid yourself. When AMD's on top, which they have demonstrated, they did it immediately. The second they were on top, they slowed down the product release cadence, left their pricing where it was, and fair fair play, AMD, right? We were in the middle of the biggest silicon shortage of certainly my lifetime, which would probably mean pretty much ever because consumer electronics have kind of only really been a thing in our lifetimes. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, I'm not going to say, hey, you should sell something you don't even have enough stock of for half price. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, just, they, they've legitimately been out of stock for a long time. Yeah, just 
don't treat this like this is an isolated to Intel thing or an isolated to NVIDIA thing. We need competition. Just because AMD being on top with no competition would be no better for consumers than Intel or NVIDIA doing it. So that's, that's, my, that's my spiel. I'm not going to say any more on the subject other than that. Dang. A 5800X for 299 That's pretty crazy. That's genuinely pretty crazy. That is a pretty darn good deal. It's a good time. I'm it's pretty good time. I'm pretty into At least there's one computer part that I feel like is like pretty aggressively priced right now cuz everything else is just horrible. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, <laughs> Maybe that's cases fair. are okay. I haven't looked into it, but like, yeah, things are things are rough. Things are rough out there. Man, I mean, you cannot go wrong. When's the last time Wow. When's the last time that I could say 100% straight faced as a gamer. You can't go wrong. AMD, Intel, flip a coin, decide what color you like better, who has the better box art. Both really strong. You're going to be you're going to be really gonna happy be with your gaming performance yeah. no matter which way you go and next generation could easily flip around. Let's see. Man, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I freaking love it. Something that I thought was really interesting about the Z690 platform is that while it does support PCI Express Gen 5, I had sort of expected PCI Express Gen 5 to make its way into the uh, storage. But the way the CPUs are actually configured is with 16 PCI Express Gen 5 lanes, which are by default just all shunted over to the PCIe 16X slot, meaning that the only devices that are going to be able to take advantage of PCI Express Gen 5 on a typical consumer system are going to be GPUs. So we are pretty much stuck with PCI Express Gen 4 storage speeds for the... at least until AMD releases a PCIe Gen 5 platform, because it's pretty clear that if Intel thought there was a benefit to it, they could have built in another five lanes. But you want to know what my conspiracy theory is about this? I think that ultimately it's the current gen consoles that are dictating oh. how fast storage should be today. Interesting. I also think there's really not much point building an M.2 NVMe drive on a PCI Express Gen 5 interface because we're already under realistic loads. Like other than just, all right, I got I got part of this drive in Time SLC cache mode benchmark. and I am sequentially reading and writing data and that's it. In any other reasonably <laughs> real-world workload, we are so far from even fully utilizing PCI Express Gen 4 by 4 that it's a joke because we're, we're limited by the controllers, we're limited by especially the NAND dies. And that's not going to change as we, as we get to 5-bit per cell flash. That stuff ain't getting faster. And if anything, it's become more difficult to find flash devices that will perform the way that you might expect them to based on the spec sheet. Yeah, yeah. Things are getting a little messy. Right? I mean, we've got these 12K cameras that we're getting rid of. Uh, but those 12K <laughs> Blackmagic cameras and finding an external USB-C drive that could actually handle sustained writes at those kinds of bit rates was extremely difficult, even though almost all of them had a label that said they should be able to handle it just fine. But that's because most of them are using some kind of uh, like caching algorithm yeah. to intelligently write really quickly and then flush that to slower NAND uh, that's running in a different operating mode over time. Um, because it, the dies just aren't capable of it, and you're not going to be able to just parallelize it more because you're limited by this M.2 form factor that you can put a maximum of, what, like four NAND dies on? That's it. So until we stack them higher, um, eliminate some of those internal bottlenecks, I can see why until basically went, yeah, PCIe Gen 5 storage is just not a thing for now, so I guess let's just not bother. And... You know, if there's going to be any kind of benefit from faster storage on the desktop, especially for gamers, I think it's pretty much going to come down to Microsoft Direct Storage. Does ga do ga <sighs> you, you've mentioned gamers a couple of times, like uh, consoles holding back and stuff like that. How, do you think that really influences hardware stuff that much? Well, I think what it influences is figuring out, you know, what you're targeting for a platform. 
So right now, what we know is Microsoft is working on direct storage, which is going to allow PC gamers to get similar functionality to what the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series is yeah. have, where they, especially in the case of the PlayStation 5, might even be able to actively stream assets from the SSD straight to the video card's uh, frame buffer and l without even passing through um, through system memory. So that's that's super cool, right? But the, sorry, what was your question? Actually, I like slept like two and a half hours last night. I can barely keep my brain going. Yeah, no, all good. Um, right, are we, are we limited? Right, right, right. So what we know is that we've got this functionality coming to the PC. That's on the horizon. But beyond that, Faster storage on the desktop has been for freaking lulls. I just think and like for a long time. Maybe it's changed under under Pat Gelsinger's guidance, but I, I we probably both remember there was a certain content creator that was brought to Intel back in the day to like explain why gamers care at all about Intel CPUs. Yes. Because the board just had no idea that people use their CPUs for gaming. Um that was awkward. So sometimes I'm just kind of wondering, like, do are they actually comparing against consoles? Do they actually care? Do they really think about gamers at all? Maybe they do more these days. Maybe that meeting had a little bit more impact. It's also know. entirely possible that this was mainly a marketing bullet point. But mm. why would you bother making it a marketing bullet point unless you think there's some kind of compelling story you yep. can tell around it, right? Yep. And that's a compelling story that I I would probably want to tell. Yeah, we've got PCI Express Gen Five, which on the desktop. It's going to be for gaming. Yeah. That's it. Like Workstation, yeah, sure, totally different conversation. And there's a rumored X699 platform. So th it looks like we're going to get an HEDT platform again. Absolutely. You go PCI Express Gen 5 there. Now we're talking high-speed networking. Now we're talking high-speed storage arrays, right? Yeah. We're not talking yeah. one drive because you might actually be working with large scientific data sets that you need to be able to to parse extremely quickly, right? You might have these enormous databases that you're looking things up and you might need all this IO, right? On the desktop, you don't need that. The main yeah, thing generally. pushing forward the need for faster PCI Express on the desktop is gonna be gaming, whether it's that top 16X slot for your GPU or whether it's your storage. And we know that console generations, they refresh, you know, what, every like four to seven years or whatever whatever so the numbers there. are unless yeah. your name is nintendo in which case you just slap a new screen on it and call it a day so <laughs> what we know is that for for literally the entire service life of a pc that someone is going to buy today like a typical service life five or six years no game developer is going to target faster storage than pci express gen 4x4 yeah that's it, because that's what Sony's got in the PlayStation 5, and then Microsoft's actually half that speed, if I recall correctly. So I, I, I do think that that could be a factor. It's also probable that they were working on the design for this platform three years ago and might have just had no idea. For all they knew, maybe NVIDIA was going to have a PCIe Gen 5 GPU to launch at this time. Maybe that got delayed by the pandemic, and the whole thing was supposed to line up in a... Oh, whoops, I guess we've got lack of competition. I guess we've yeah. got Gen 5 motherboards and no Gen 5 devices to put in them. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, there, remember that whole awkward thing where AMD hadn't updated their chipsets for like however many years in the the dark time, the bulldozer times? Yeah. And AMD went out and launched what was it? Gen 3, Gen 3 GPUs when they literally didn't have a Gen 3 platform that you could stick these GPUs in. <laughs> yeah. So poor... That was... That was there was a lot of memes. Yeah. So poor AMD, right? They had to do their... They had to do their launch video using an Intel platform to show off the gaming performance really of their of their poor graphics card, right? I mean, not, not anymore, obviously, but those kinds of things absolutely happen. You can't expect all of these ducks to magically perfectly align, right? Uh, Speaking we of magically perfectly aligning ducks... Sponsor spots? Uh, yes, we should definitely talk about sponsor spots. Oh, my goodness. We've only gotten through a couple topics. We've got so much stuff to talk about we today, do. guys. There's a lot of things. Uh, the show is brought to you today by... Ba -da -ba -ba, spanning. Uh, 
Banning is an easy-to-use software-as-a-service data protection solution for Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, and Salesforce that enables administrators and users to restore data and get back to work in just a few clicks. Spanning's world-class backup solution is designed for enterprises and MSPs and comes with features to protect your most critical cloud data, including mail, contacts, events, files, Salesforce records, and metadata. Prevent data loss from ever happening in the first place with Spanning's premium dark web monitoring feature, which alerts admins when compromised credentials are found on the dark web. That's actually kind of, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, well, you'll no longer have an excuse to be browsing the dark web at work, I guess. But <laughs> as a native cloud solution, Spanning requires no hardware, installed software, network bandwidth, data center space, management, or maintenance. Nothing. It sets up in as little as 60 seconds, and you can get 50% off list price by checking it out at spanning.com slash Linus or at the link down below. The show is also brought to you by MSI. MSI's Spatium M470 NVMe SSD offers sequential read speeds of up to 5,000 megabytes per second and sequential write speeds of up to 4,400 megabytes per second, which is completely irrelevant because it means absolutely nothing for daily use other than big number. Mm, big. Um, yes. But it is rated for up to 3,300 terabytes written, which means that the endurance of it is looking pretty good. It uses a PCI Express Gen 4x4 interface with built-in data security and error correction capabilities. It's available in one and two terabyte capacities in the M.2 2280 form factor, so that's the 80 millimeter long one, and offers a five-year warranty. So that's probably uh, a result of that big chungus um endurance rating on it mm -hmm. it's also brought to you by ridge wallet thanks to ridge wallet for sponsoring the wan show with ridge wallet you can stop carrying around old hotel room keys receipts spent gift cards all that kind of crap ridge wallet helps you carry less they use two metal plates that are bound together by a strong elastic band to hold your cards in place but still make them easily accessible they're rfid blocking they offer a lifetime guarantee and they're available in aluminum carbon fiber and titanium they also have far more than just wallets they've got battery banks bags smartphone covers and more and if you use offer code WAN, you can save 10 percent on everything at ridge.com slash wan now um i need like 10 seconds i need a 10 second gap right now okay wait where i talk oh okay hopefully ridge wallet's not watching by this point because like they have they have bags we're gonna have our own bag oh so i haven't really shown this in detail it sort of made a cameo in the framework yeah. video yeah. but this is a new sample and we are getting close boys this is going to be oh i like that on the like zipper protector that's pretty cool uh sorry it's one? a very minor detail but it says linus tech tips on the oh yeah protector. yeah yeah it says it says linus tech tips you here probably can't even see that on, on camera. The, like the zipper the zipper water um water seal yeah um this bag is freaking sick one of the first things that uh i was talking to colin and david they were like yeah the problem with backpacks is they like never have enough like s slips for for all the stuff that like sleeves oh to, to okay. slide things into check this out Ugh. This is going to be really hard to talk into our microphones while we're also... Do oh, I'm going to try to Vanna White it for you? No, no, so it's fine. No? So basically, you've got your sleeve for your laptop, another sleeve for a tablet. Uh, there's a bit of a miscommunication with the factory on this sample. It's going to be microfiber, not whatever this weird vinyl is. Another one that we're going to double check. Uh, so we're going to check the dimensions of the Steam Deck, make sure that fits, make sure the Nintendo oh. Switch fits. So you'll be able to get all that in there. <laughs> and then so you've got another two pockets up here. I've got my battery bank. I've got my... Uh, this is my dongle pocket and then the main pocket you'll probably notice it has like a really rigid kind of square shape to it like it doesn't actually compress very much well, just not to derail you but we've got a couple questions in the chat what's the biggest size of laptop that fits 17. 17. this is like full bag of holding style um pretty much completely unencumbered native support for our 40 ounce uh, water bottle oh, cool it's got a little holder for it got another little slip here Got your sunglasses pouch. Uh, I really like our sunglasses pouch. It uses like this kind of here. Feel it. It's like a, it's like a gel for the oh. for the film. So we didn't want to go with a hard one because it was going to take away from being able to like. I managed to put a Jackery portable power bank in here, like 
you know those, those ones giant. Yeah. yeah because so we wanted it to stay square so you could like really put big stuff in it and that was going to interfere with that and make it kind of hard to get stuff in and out so we went with this it's kind of a good balance between protection and um flexibility here we're going to reconfigure these pockets i think i've got some notes for nick and bridget i think we're going to have this open on these three sides rather than open up on the bottom because it just makes it so you can't really store anything in here right now and then we're going to have a full length one for the screwdriver um, so you can put your LTT screwdriver when that's finally available all the way down here. You got a bunch of Is that one? That is one, isn't it? Yeah. Have you not seen it yet? No. Oh, all right. There you go. Sweet. And then finally, ugh, on the other side, you got a nice little side pocket that has a pass through in case you want to run a cable from this mesh in here, passport pocket. I am jazzed. This thing is so overbuilt. Check out these rivets on the handle. <laughs> there's three on either side the idea is that you could probably basically tow a car with it oh my goodness that's crazy and there's a ton of stuff that's like that like double that's stitched nuts. the bag's heavy because the bottom the entire bottom has two full layers of this material so if you drag your bag around you're like kind of person who gets home and just like hucks your bag into the corner and it's like it wears away there's a full additional layer of the same material, like that same like rugged material um, that you would have to wear through in order to wear all the way through the bag. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm a little distracted by the screwdriver. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, yeah, have you not been hands-on hands with this yet? Not once. Feels really good. Of course it does. I'm pretty stoked. Yeah, Alex and Kyle did a fantastic <laughs> job. Um, I really like how the ratchet feels. Just switching the rat ratchet feels really nice. It, the ratchet might end up being a little smoother so it comes oh, I, down. I didn't actually turn it because I didn't want to oh. go through the mic, but just switching the ratchet. Oh, yeah. yeah. it's It feels nice. It's good. Yeah. It's good. We're excited. You guys should have a bundle. Um, I'm, I'm mostly talking to like Conrad and Nick about this, but you guys should have a bundle called like fully loaded or something. Fully where loaded. Where you get like the backpack and then it has a screwdriver that's like in the screwdriver slot already and it comes with a water bottle and it has some like some shirts in it or that's whatever. That's actually a pretty good idea. I mean. And it, it like ships as like the bag. You it know? would depend on us being able to actually keep all of these items in stock. That would remember how I warned yeah. people on WAN show last week that WAN hoodies were going to sell out. <laughs> they go. They're gone. Uh, They're gone. I think we're out of stock of at least three sizes now. We still have small, medium, large. No, small, medium. Sorry, large is gone. XL we have. Three XL is gone. So there's there's still a handful in a few sizes. And um, that's not what I'm supposed to talk about for LTT Store today, actually. I'm supposed to talk about the whole bunch of new designs. Uh, Speaking of which, um, the notifier thing that you guys have probably seen popping up around this part of the screen. Um, not anymore, but you know. Yeah. Uh, that, there's, there's a way to send messages with that. If you guys buy merch during the show and choose to send a message, right now we just see your first name. Um, and we can, we can get a message from you, and then we will do that super chat style at the end of the show. We'll go through those messages. So Got some great yeah. new designs. Um, this one's really different. Yes, there we go. Cool. I like this shirt. Yeah, I really like it too. It's just kind of neon, kind of cool, kind of retro-y looking. And then finally, we've got bananas for scale as well. Yes. So these are just little plushy bananas. If you like having a little banana for scale, we've got them in a bunch of different colors. Uh, Sarah worked on these. They've got a little short circuit logo on them. There, that was the stuff that I was supposed to talk about for the uh, for LTT store. And also the new newsletter is out. It's got a little article that Sarah wrote up um, that's about sort of how she chooses colors, which is the kind of thing you might not think about or might not know that you care about, but uh, she did a great job and I thought it was really interesting. She yeah. kind of talked through, like, here's the four colors we did not go with for our beanies that we were that we had selected, but then we got the samples and we were like, no. Um, she explains how, like, different material choices can change the way that a color looks yeah. once it's in the real world. Um, it's actually pretty cool. So make sure you sign up for the LTT Store newsletter. We're going to have lots of behind-the-scenes stuff there. I tried Dungeons & Dragons for the first time today. Yes, you did. We did uh, we did a collab with a filthy lot. So they're a local <laughs> local production company that's really focused on Dungeons and Dragons content, and then a bunch of other random stuff. 
and uh, so they're launching their their flagship show today, ready to roll. So we kind of went down, just wanted to support our our local our local you know online video bras. And uh, let me tell you, it was it was an experience. So you're the more experienced D and D player, sure. obviously, yeah. of the yeah. two of us. Yeah. How would you describe the what would I call it a mission, a scenario? What what did we do? We did we did a one shot. Um, they're often referred to as one shots, which is where you have like a campaign and a set of characters that you are only planning on playing one time or for one day Got or it. whatever. So oh, yeah. I should pull up my character. Your <laughs> his character was ridiculous. The chat had figured out his like stat line um, by the end of the game, and we're just like. What? Uh, because in 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 you know casual Linus fashion, he was attempting to troll uh, pretty much as hard as possible. Uh, if you've seen the uh, tech longer um, that that Riley filmed about Star Citizen, you probably have been uh, you know first first hand witness to some of that. But yeah, it's uh, it, it was fun. It was interesting. So we did a one shot, and um, I created a character. Linus Tech 69. That's his name in game, by the way. Yeah, Linus Tech 69. Uh, he was a, a halfling <laughs> barbarian. Um, let me. Uh, why, yeah. why, don't, why don't you talk? Why don't you talk through barbarian. the uh, the adventure we went on today? I'm gonna get signed in. I'm gonna see if I can sure, pull yeah. up. The... So we we started in this town that has this like effectively like haunted castle thing. Uh, the 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 person that hired us there brought us into this basement. We got introduced to the task that we needed to do. Um, for some reason, he had a body there um, that he revealed, and then just kind of like looked at for a while um, until its like stomach exploded and there's weird larva stuff. And then Linus tried to eat one. Um, yeah, I did try to eat one. I think I ended yeah. up taking some poison damage. Yes, yeah. Um, and then after we killed those things, we go to the castle, go down into the bottom, and we engage in combat. We roll for initiative. So tell me something. Um, for the people who don't play D&D, &D, how, yeah. how would you like explain what the heck D&D &D is? It's, it's like if you, if you took... Um, Generally, uh, I, I believe D and D kind of has to be this way, but most most tabletop things I would say are generally fantasy. If you took a fantasy RPG co op game, and you tried to instead of making it a video game, you made it a tabletop game. Well, there you go. A lot of original video game versions of fantasy RPG games are like a hundred percent based on D and D. They're right. either campaigns that the original writers or, or game developers ran with their friends back in the day, and they just still had the notes for. Um, that was like genuinely a way that some old games were were made. Um, a lot of the ways that the mechanics in those games work were based on D and D, all that kind of stuff. So, kind of instead of going forward like things did, if you go backwards, you can kind of figure out how it worked. So basically, the real challenge of the scenario today was that they had to carry me, a yeah. level five lightfoot halfling barbarian with a constitution of eight. And uh, what, what was my other particularly stupid strength. stat? Strength uh, of eight as well, I yeah. believe. Strength of eight. <laughs> which, which I know that might not mean much, but essentially that's a very low number. Um, that's, I believe, as low as you can possibly go. Um, and those are the two stats that he should have the highest. And an armor class of 10. Uh, also low. I, d I, dumped all of my, I dumped all of my additional points into uh, charisma. And then once I capped out charisma, I dumped the rest into wisdom. You never got to use your paint kit. I know. I, I grabbed oh. the most I grabbed the most interesting inventory items that I could find. So I brought an abacus with me down into the dungeon. <laughs> I brought some painter's supplies. Uh, I brought a whip, which I did end up using. I attempted yes. to use my plus six animal handling uh, talent to uh, tame a mouse. And it turns out that, according to the dungeon master anyway, mice are bound to run away when you crack a whip. But then they followed you later. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. She told me the mice were following me again later, yeah. but by that time we were fighting this, like, moth. Demon moth thing. Demon, yeah, moth yeah. demon thing. Yeah. So I got to say that I, I see how it could be a ton of fun. Like, if you got into it, like, I've... My big thing, and I've always kind of, I've always kind of been of the mind that like, oh man, I just, honestly, I just, I can't get into this. 
and I'm still I'm I have that yeah today's today's experience has caused that opinion to completely stay exactly the same <laughs> um, because it's it's just obvious that there is so much to know and not just for the dungeon master but also for the players if you want the game to progress smoothly yeah like there were clearly times when the fact that i had no idea what i was doing i mean aside from being a troll and trying to lick everything that i found on the floor um that it just it kind of slowed down the progression of the game because i don't know what characteristics affect which things i might attempt to do or or whatever to be fair, right? that that is true for a lot i guess not as much anymore as games are getting more and more simplified but that is true for a lot of things and a lot of games in general. Yeah, so that's the big reason why I kind of like I look at it and I just go, yeah, I, I I have no idea how I would how I would possibly get into this. But to just play and be taken along for the ride, totally fun. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally different from any other games that I've played before. And it was uh, it was actually it was it was pretty fun. Will I do it again? Probably no time soon. But um, especially because I don't think if anyone were to watch the VOD of that uh, mission today that anyone would invite me to play. <laughs> I, 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 I would. I, I at one point had an opportunity to contribute to the assault on the, the monster and I decided to eat my um, food. Pretzels and trail mix. Yeah, eat my trail nice. mix instead. And then a good choice. I, I, I did throw my javelin at the monster. Just to, well. In the direction of the monster. Just roughly, yeah. yeah I did yeah. exactly zero damage <laughs> to the opposing team. Um, and then Luke actually managed to almost tank the entire the entire opponent that we had today. Bonked him. Bonked him. Because Luke yeah. apparently knows what he's doing, even though I... Yeah, Vaguely. I, I, have, I haven't played actual D&D in a really long time, but I've played a bunch of, of tabletop systems. Um, so... Yeah. yeah, it was fun. So thanks, uh, thanks, Filthy Lot, for the invite, and uh, good luck with your with your new show and all that good stuff. Someone in chat said, "Where can we spectate this lovely content?" I'm assuming it will be a a vod. I have no idea how know. they've got things set up because they've taken some fairly uh, unique approaches. Like for example, they're they're premiering their new show today, right? Like I said. Well, they decided to live stream it to Twitch, and then I actually don't know if there's a VOD. Oh uh, yeah, looks like looks YouTube like there's yet. a VOD. Yeah, it looks like they do have a VOD on Twitch. On though. Twitch, yes. Yeah. So if you go to a filthy lot, one word. Yeah, you guys can you guys can go check out the VOD. Luke Luke played too. He was he was very helpful. I thought it was pr uh, probably a lot less interesting, but. Oh man, I I, I had fun. I did too. I had fun. I tried to steal from the quest giver like immediately. Yeah. And then I lost. I lost hit points. Well, not technically the quest giver. No. The corpse. Uh, you tried to loot the. corpse. Oh, that's right. Is I tried the corpse to... his like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know why he attacked me. I don't. Or did I try to? I, maybe I did try to steal from the quest giver. Oh no, I did. Yeah. I tried to loot the corpse that yeah. was there like immediately. And then he like smashed your finger. I, just, I thought I was playing Final Fantasy. You bit. just loot all the things. Just yeah, you're like in someone's house, like having a conversation with. Let me them. smash like, your jars. Yeah, one sec, can I just? <laughs> <laughs> Let me break all your pottery. I need I need rupees. Now I have a confession. Mm. I have not touched my computer in the last week because Whoa. I just have been busy, and also it's it's more work than I want to do the things that I want to do. Um, Is that a form of quitting? No. No, I don't have to use my computer at home. Ever? And it's still well, like okay, okay. I shouldn't say I haven't touched. Like I've sent some emails and stuff. Okay, like it's okay. it's it's still my daily driver computer. I haven't pulled up my laptop at home. Okay. To okay. to use. No, okay. no. It's okay. I just okay. I haven't. I, I, haven't I interpreted gamed. that as like you avoided that computer. I didn't game all week. Okay. I did play some Mario Kart with my kids, but that doesn't count. Well, uh, yeah, no, I didn't fine. game all week. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really have any updates on the Linux challenge, but you alluded in the pre-show to I do. having some significant updates. Yeah. Hit so me. we didn't really... So the, the last challenge, we were like thinking about doing it this week, and then we technically have more time because we have until the 10th, I think, for yeah, me. Yeah, something like that. So that's till next Wednesday. Um, and then like it could extend, whatever. We, we have one more challenge that we need to do. One more specific challenge yeah. that goes alongside us just having to use it all the time. Um, I have increased the amount of computers 
Really? My laptop. You're going Linux on the laptop, on yeah. the Razor Blade? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Tell me about this. Oh, well, I I have said from the very... There's, there's, there's things that Linux is really, 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 really good at. And there's things that are, you know, a little rough. And right. this whole challenge is based around gaming. So we've been kind of shoved headfirst into a lot of the stuff that's pretty rough. Right. Right. But like the, and, and I feel like maybe we haven't done this enough because the community's really butthurt, but then I feel like the community's going to be really butthurt no matter what we do. So I don't know. Um, but like infrastructure, professional, server hosting, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Unparalleled. And actually, did we even talk about part three of the challenge where we had to do mundane tasks like print a document i don't think we have did we talk about it last week guys let us let me know in the float plane chat uh, if we talked about I'm that last sure. week yeah um but yeah the i feel like the other end of the spectrum from the like crazy high level stuff that it's really good at yeah i think the really basic stuff it's also quite good at yeah so i've seen a lot of criticism of the challenge from people that are saying linux is totally fine for the average user because all they need to do is check their email and like edit a spreadsheet once in a while. And it's like, e e yes, but it was always a gaming perspective. Yeah. It was never my gran perspective because you're right. My gran totally could use Linux. Um, to yeah. Do so all I ever use my laptop for is, is like Teams, which I've kind of figured out at this point. It's not a problem anymore. Slack and a web browser. So it's totally fine. Yeah. And I'm, I'm genuinely finding at this point in time um, that I'm getting more... in Because my, my whole argument and the reason why I abandoned Linux last time that I abandoned it, because I tried Linux, I think, four years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, I tried it for a little bit and then I was really frustrated because it kept getting in my way of just working. Because all right. I wanted to do was turn the computer on, work, and turn it off. But like we used the example that I've given in, in the, in the past on WAN show, I believe was that updating discord was like a chore, but I used discord at that point in time for float plane. So I needed it. Right. And yep. it was, it was annoying to update it. Now and discord's super easy to use. Super easy. Yeah, just... And people brought that up before I had installed Linux at all. So I installed Linux this time and yeah, updating discord's easy. Updating Slack is easy. Updating yep. teams is easy. Updating your browser is easy. All the things that I would need to do for work, honestly, at this point in time, Linux is getting in my way less than Windows. It, it, I, I believe it would be easier to use. So I'm, right. I'm trying to go in that direction because if that was my argument in the past, now Windows is losing. So right. I should be using Linux on my work computer. So I, I am. Gregio says, Linux is amazing for gaming. Period. <laughs> I'm baffled about the hardships you have had. Maybe using an AMD GPU would help you just a little. I've seen a ton of comments suggesting that our problem is our GPU. That is... Not the problem. I don't think I've ran into any issues that are related to no. GPU. No, the personally. GPU experience has honestly, after all the really warnings easy. that I got, other than navigating through their driver, which is terrible, like the uh, the oh, control the software. panel. Yeah, yeah, the control yeah. panel is terrible. Yeah. but in terms of just like playing games, the been GPU fine. driver has been the least problematic we part don't, of any We of did it. run into some performance issues in Anno, and maybe, but that wasn't a big deal. Yeah, that also might have been my fault for installing Uplay using Lutris and then downloading Anno instead of installing Anno using Lutris. But that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about where it's yeah. like, no, this is actually not intuitive and not user friendly. Uh, we should talk about the, um, apparently we did not talk about part three. The, so we filmed part three already. Yeah. Um, guys, there's some people asking like, where the heck are these freaking videos? So part one has been delayed to YouTube because uh, we've had embargoed releases, time-sensitive videos okay. that have kept bumping it and bumping it and bumping it because the Linux challenge is not... Um, I understand it's time-sensitive from your perspective. You want to watch it. But it's not time-sensitive from a, oh my goodness, this product launches today. If we don't cover it today, no one will care about it tomorrow. We must launch this video. So... We um, So we've been pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And then part two has been delayed by the absolute cluster hump of footage that I provided to the editors um, 
My screen cap is like kind of tied to my doc of just general notes, but then my scripts, while they are derived from my doc of general notes, also have other thoughts that I've added after the fact. Yeah. So putting together the exact moment of screen cap that's supposed to accompany every point that I make in those is going to be very challenging. And I would have gone through and done it for them, but I have been absolutely slammed. I have not had any time to look at it. Part three is delayed by part one not being up on YouTube and part two not being edited and up on Floatplane, but it is shot. <laughs> Luke and I have done yeah. all of the work for it. And what was, I mean, I think we can, we can definitely tease part of it, but part three, we decided to pivot. Part three was supposed to be game launchers, but because I just have not kept up with getting all the game launchers installed, I was like, hey, Luke, can we make part four, part three? And he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> so part three ended up being non-gaming. So James yeah. created a series of challenges for us, and how did you do? It was uh, like, don't don't give them the exact like score or anything, but like, how'd you feel about non gaming on Linux? I was pretty confident going into it, um, but I, I I like I was pretty confident before I knew what the tasks were, but I was a little bit concerned. I like pre-downloaded a few programs just expecting some things because we had time limits for each one of the tasks. Yeah. And I didn't want like downloading things to affect me heavily. Right. And I knew like I could probably argue like let's just not worry about the amount of time it took to download the thing because that's going to be the same on pretty much everything. But I just didn't want to even think about it. Um, so I, I like pre-downloaded like GIMP, which is a, a photo editing software and like a couple things that I was like, you know what? Editing a photo is probably a pretty standard task. Let's make sure I have the stuff to do that and like just do a couple of things. As long as I could get them, if I remember correctly, my, my rule for that was that it was getting it from the package manager. Mm -hmm. So if it was brain dead easy to find it and get it, then I like let myself get it before I read what the tasks were. And then I read the tasks, at which point I was not doing anything until the, the event started. And I was like, sweet. You're ready to rock. This is going to be really easy. I didn't even need anything that I pre-downloaded. The the like the one thing that I told you on the call, I had to get that during the challenge because I didn't pre-download that. Yeah. Um so like because that wasn't in the package manager. So, yeah, and it ended up being incredibly easy to the point where certain tasks there one very much in particular and you probably know what one I'm talking about was genuinely notably easier, I would argue, on Linux than it than I've had experiences doing those types of things in the past. We can spoil that one. I think you're talking about printing. Yes. So my ancient printer, there's only one place. It's like some weird third-party driver repository that still has drivers for it. It's a, a CLP310 or something. Maybe you'll find another place for the drivers. Don't send it to me. I don't care. I have it stored on my NAS now. Um, and it's like this whole, it's this, it's this MSI that you have to extract, to actually yeah. grab the, the stupid, what are they dot? I don't remember what the extension of the file type is. Dot I and I, is it, is that it? I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is to, sure. to find the actual like driver file. And then you have to go through yeah. and manually add the printer point it at the specific file. And then it'll, it'll load and it works perfectly. Everything is fine because even though it's a windows seven, driver i think it's a super old printer so even though it's a windows 7 driver um microsoft has actually done an outstanding job of maintaining driver compatibility from microsoft from windows vista really you can sometimes use vista drivers on like windows 10 and you'll get away with it um not not every time to be very clear so it works perfectly if you can figure out how to install the freaking thing on linux i was like uh oh how hard is this going to be because this ancient printer Add network printer. It was like, th you mean this one? And I was like, yes. And it was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. My, mine, like, uh, my girlfriend has a printer. I have not had a printer, I think, ever. I've just always used, like, yeah. other people's, my parents, whatever. Um, and, and every once in a while, when the printer turns on, I'll just get a little, like, system notification that's like, ah, oh, printer connected. So uh, leading up until this task, I've just been like, I wonder if that works. I just have no reason to print anything ever. Like I haven't had to print something in years. Yeah, um, Jamal Taylor, that's what happened. That's right. Samsung sold their printer division to HP who gave exactly zero flying Fs about <laughs> properly supporting the old Samsung versions of the printers. That's why I can't right. just go on Samsung's website and download the driver package for it anymore. And I remember now, gotcha. there you go. But yeah, printing... 
like the, the one of the most like stereotypical things that's annoying to do on windows yes like attaching printers was just the easiest thing ever and I, we've been thing. saying for years like this should how be so is printing much... so broken and then it turns out it's microsoft's fault yeah <laughs> <laughs> good to know <laughs> nice yeah yeah thanks for that thanks for clearing all of that up for me <laughs> real good it's ridiculous so that's going to be an interesting one. We've got, a, I think it's 12 challenges that we have to go through. And then we have a time limit that is allotted to each challenge. You may not spend longer than 15 minutes. And I did run into one kind of Linux, Linux-ism. There was something that is very simple to do if you happen to know the utility to use. So Luke blew right through it. Oh, and yeah. I was not able to complete Mine it was luck. within my 15 minutes. Now I could have done it. I could have done it if I had like two hours mm. to dedicate to it, to find finally find a guide. But you guys are gonna see, especially in a time constrained environment. Um, which can happen without the artificial 15-minute timer. But if you don't have all the time in the world to figure out how to do a basic freaking thing, it can be an extremely frustrating experience. And that particular one uh, ended up not being simple. When you see how not simple mine was, it'll blow your mind. You'll be like, how is this not one button? How yeah. is this not completely automatic? Yeah. Like it was for yours. And like, and like, I just tried to Google it. Like, like what, what would I do? Cause the first thing that I, sorry, I was just scratching my leg. The, the first thing that I uh, did was just Google the exact name of the program that I like using on windows. Um, and then the word Linux after it. Yeah. And just lo and behold, it happens to have a Linux version. So that was very lucky. Um, but I just tried Googling the term I would have used if I had no knowledge of that program in the past, it did not come up. Yeah. So I didn't Google anything because I already had an application pre-installed as part of my distro or desktop environment, whatever determines which application I got, sure. um, that supported that, that file format and supported that functionality. Right. But required me to go and create like a certificate in order to do it. And the guide for how to do that was like Which really like, focused on like more like web developers yeah. as opposed to what I was trying to yeah. do. And that's the thing about Google. Google search is amazing. If you happen to be looking for the answer that everyone else who used those keywords was looking for. But as soon as you've got a keyword that sounds like something, but is actually something else, you are done i've actually run into situations where um i don't even remember what microsoft stupid bing uh, i've actually run into situations where <laughs> bing has managed to get me the result i need that google can't provide me because it sucks so much <laughs> because it's just like what are you looking for oh, oh here's some <laughs> random crap <laughs> thanks bing uh this is another example of what i'm talking about the bitman says Comparing Windows gaming on Linux isn't super fair either. It's more comparable to emulating other platforms' games, e.g. PS5, than running native Windows games. This is the same kind of argument that I see when it's like, no, it's not, fair. it's not fair to run that DDR5 on that one. Or it's not fair to turn hyperthreading on on Intel CPUs. That was a thing back in the day. Yeah. It's not fair to turn on hyperthreading because AMD CPUs don't have it, so you should eliminate variables. It's like, no. No, what we're evaluating is the user experience. And users want to play video games. And so if your options are install this or install this, and your goal is play video games, it doesn't matter from a user standpoint, user experience. It doesn't matter if one of them is emulating or rather not emulating. Um, it doesn't matter yeah, if one of them is emulating and not. one of them is running it natively. Um, it just matters what the user experience is. Nothing and there's, else also, is relevant. there's also little things like- yeah. um, It's not fair or unfair, it just is. Yeah. Sorry. Like I, I, it's not fair. I personally think that, and you're going to run into this type of stuff on Windows too, a hundred percent. Okay, so I ran like into we, some really dumb that. stuff on Windows today. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. We ran into was really, really dumb stuff on Windows all the time. Yeah, like uh, we're not, we're not. I remember. We're not trying to be Windows Crusaders. What? Yeah. Uh. Th so here's a really dumb one. Uh. It open VPN. Okay. So sometimes I'll accidentally leave it connected and I'll put my computer to sleep, like on my okay. laptop. Yeah. If I wake it up and I still have the folder that I was like, navigating using my VPN connection open, no amount of 
reconnecting it and reconnecting it will allow me to windows explorer just gets confused yeah i will yeah. not be able to do anything with that folder i have to go restart the i have to close open vpn restart the explorer process open open vpn connect to it then open explorer then i'll be able to navigate and it's just like these, these stupid kinds of dances solid mixer i disagree that command line is not a good user experience for a gamer there is no disagree that just you're just objectively wrong i'm sorry thank you for being one of my paid subscribers love you but you're actually just wrong there is there is there <laughs> i should say there are uh there are people that are willing to take you up on the challenge of being able to complete uh operations faster in a command line than you can in a, in a gui really yes. okay i think those people if i could argue who are they uh, just somebody on Twitter. I don't know. Oh, okay. I thought you um, meant like the one of the float plane staff. No, or no, no, like no, that. no. Yeah. Um, I think those people would be looking for intentionally loaded situations. Well, like yeah, sure. I mean, if you have to, buried. If you have to copy eight thousand files or something like that, yeah, sure. I don't even know necessarily, but like, I I think there might be situations where it is better. I think overall you're gonna be better using it, but anyways, solid um, mixer. It's not subjective. For 99% of the things the typical gamer would need to do on their computer, it is faster to use a GUI. Because that's that's part of the problem, right? Is 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 sorry, I keep moving away from the you mic. You do. Uh, that, that's that. I think part of the problem is that we're we're dealing with terms that some people might be using in different ways. So, like when he's saying like a gamer, well, there could be someone who's like uh, a, a a a DevOps Linux admin at work and a gamer at home. Mm -hmm. and when they want to do stuff on their computer they're so native to the command line that they're just going to be able to do it faster that's fine right but that just means they suck at using a gui then sure in most situations yeah and like a so lot of like, gaming things okay. are, are visual anyway so like yeah you can probably find a way to you can definitely start your games through the command line but it's going to be faster through like i see a lot of arguments um <sighs> for installing applications using the command line on linux Spooky -dooky. Yeah. but the problem with that is that it assumes that you already know to the exact character what the name of the package you're trying to install is well you can you can also query a list but i mean you'd still that's not faster than the command list. line then yeah you should use your package manager or rather you should use your graphical package <laughs> if, manager if it's there or you should google it <laughs> yeah so uh, either way this is one of those things where unless you happen to have that requisite knowledge and i feel like a lot of people live in a bit of a bubble oh yeah where oh yeah there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of that going on where they're assuming people have this requisite knowledge when i say gamer i don't mean you you might be a gamer sure that's cool but you're also a lot of other things maybe you're so a the, father maybe you're a martial artist the, maybe you're a musician right when i say gamer i'm talking about gamers in general in general gamers do not want to use the command line and is not more efficient the core question so we we talked earlier about how like the core idea is is using linux for gaming the core question is essentially is 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 now the year of the linux desktop and one of the prerequisites for that to be a thing yeah is gaming for a lot of be, people for a lot of not well, everyone for but i'd say in a lot of situations it, it's it almost doesn't even matter because like if 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 it's a family computer, sure. If gaming is important for one of the people, yes, they're gonna push that argument really hard. There's a lot of forever alones that don't have a family to share their computer. That's true. They might already be running Linux. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> you set me up. You <laughs> knew that was coming. That was so on purpose. You can't even say you can't believe I just did that. When you literally like you threw the alley oop. I and can't believe you've done this. You're like, bro, get it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> it's the so the idea is is it time yet? And like while the experience for you yeah. as a gamer who uses Linux might be all right, it's general population doesn't want to learn command line and it's it's not going to change it's not going to happen yeah that um, is literally never going to happen i promise you that the whole industry is going the other direction um so uh solid yeah. mixer says hey that's cool if we disagree thanks for doing the challenge anyway it's cool to see you guys trying it out yeah i'm i'm enjoying it i'm having fun great response so one landmine thing that we ran into um, and yes. this was not pre-planned. This was not planned before we started this challenge. This I don't even think this was planned before that night. Um, but we wanted to play 
Supreme Commander, Forge Alliance Forever. We wanted to play it because we played on Windows. It's a fun game. You should try it. Um, we also had some amount of information, which was that Linus had looked it up, and there was an official guide from the community, official from community, whatever, yeah. um, to get Forge Alliance Forever working on Linux. So going into this project, we know there's a game that we want to play, and we know that it works on Linux, right? Yeah. This is one of those problems where, like, the argument was brought up earlier, and the thing that I was actually trying to refer this to is a little in the past now. But yeah. the argument came up that, like, oh, well, you're just playing games that, like, aren't really compatible with Linux, or no one's figured out the compatibility layer stuff or whatever else. It's like, okay, in this situation, we actually tried to find a game that people had already figured out all the stuff yeah. for. And lo and behold, you can get it to run, but the guide is super, super, super out of date. Yeah. To the point where there's packages that it's telling you to download that are not in those repositories anymore. So you actually can't get them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. there, you, have to, you have to find a different way to get them. And that different way to get them is extremely unintuitive. Um, to the point where there was people suggesting ways for us to get it that were like self-proclaimed Linux nerds and experts. And those ways were wrong. Yes. Which is fine. Like I'm not blaming them, but like all I'm saying is it was very unintuitive and it was difficult to do. And that's a bad experience compared to the Windows. alternative experience on Windows yep. where you download the exe file you install it, you log in. So I will usually, they work very hard. Sometimes they have some downtime. Um, sure. They're yeah. great yeah. community. Uh, I actually posted in the Discord. That's what I was trying to pull up my post. Uh, just as a user, I just posted in the technical help Discord. I did use my username, but a lot of the people there don't know who the heck I am. And I was like, hey, so um, running on Linux, is that like can it, uh, this guide? I had a hard time following this guide. And they were like, Ooh, that guide. Uh, yeah, there's really no excuse for this, given that like some of the really prominent members of the community actually daily drive Linux and game exclusively in Forge Alliance Forever on Linux. They were just like, yeah. Okay, here. Yeah, I found my post. Anyone want to update the how to install <laughs> FAF on Linux doc? I haven't been able to play for three weeks, lol. <laughs> and uh, they're like, which doc are you using? Um, I post the wiki, their own wiki, and I'm like, Java is kicking my ass. They're like, no, nah, someone else pops in. Yeah, that's out of date. Use this forum thread. I believe there's a Lutra script. Um, I don't think... So their wiki didn't have the Lutra script. Also, I think I tried the Lutra script. I haven't tried it since they suggested it, so maybe it's been updated or something, but I thought we tried the Lutra script as part of the process, and I think it I was out of date as well. there being something not good with Lutra There was some, yeah. some kind of problem. And that's, yes, that's a community thing, blah, 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 blah. but one of the problems Doesn't with matter. the Linux setup, having tons of different distros, having tons of different DEs, having a lot of community base, is you always have a circular loop of excuses that you can go through, Yeah. and none of it matters. User experience. Yes. Two words. Yep. That's it. Yep. Um, so the user experience, spoiler alert for non-gaming. Very good. Very good. I would argue very good. Maybe even excellent. Yeah. Uh, which is why I'm both switching of us. To, to say it again, which is why I'm genuinely switching my work laptop to Linux. And I genuinely think it's going to be a significantly better experience. But that doesn't mean that it's perfect. And so what I'm hoping is that there are there are definitely some members of the Linux community that do not want to hear anything other than that Linux is perfect and amazing. Uh, but there are a lot of members of the community that do seem to be seeing this feedback and understanding that actually there are things that need to improve. And if uh, an above average technical user is running into problems that are as simple as, okay, I'm not able to open and manipulate this type of document without ending up down six rabbit holes of ways to create a local security certificate on your system. Like this is ridiculous um, that something's got to change. And it's not something that is fundamentally wrong with Linux. It's just something that needs to be optimized uh, across the various distros and desktop environments, or ideally, um, you just have a consolidation take place for desktop environments and for distros because right now one of the biggest problems is the fragmentation. And it's like, I understand that a lot of them have their own strengths, but I also believe that if there were more 
people working together towards a single goal, progress would probably be faster in at least yeah. some ways. Yeah. There's also, yeah, I don't know. There's also bits like, like th this came up in, in the EPOS Vox video. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, I didn't. Apparently EPOS Vox was like doing this already. Oh, really? But hadn't released any content on it. So like, oops, no, we did not steal the idea. He doesn't say that we did. Sorry, et Eddie. Uh, he didn't say that we did. Yeah, well, either way, I mean, it's, it's still awkward. Yeah. Like I, I the, the stupid uh, Kyle's uh, bathroom gaming setup video. I had wanted to make that video for like two years. I had pitched it to so many brands and like the week or two weeks before we were finally, finally released our video. He's like, I put a gaming setup in my bathroom. I'm like, <laughs> Uh, same thing with Austin, his uh, Walmart gaming PC. Like we, we ended up delaying it because pandemic and then delaying it because we were working with a brand on it, blah, blah, blah. Austin released his like a week before ours. I, I, oh, crap. if you remember, there was the, there was that we, we ran, we filmed a nerd sports, which is the hockey nerd sports yes. video. I like cut my ankles up. Then I had to come back to the office and film the networking wall video and then go directly to a plane. Um, and that ends up launching like while Brandon and I are in Switzerland or wherever the heck yeah. we were. Um, but Jay's video on a networking wall goes out like one to two days earlier or something. And that was one of the b biggest like bro moves Jay's ever done for me, which was essentially when that came out, like, obviously these things have much bigger runtime than that. I obviously didn't copy them. And when his community was like, Hey man, Luke copied you. His response was like, No. <laughs> and i was like thank you that's actually so cool i really i will never forget that and i appreciate it a lot um but yeah uh we should probably move on evga lost a literal truckload of gpus um, oh crap sorry before we do yeah what i was trying to say about the epos vox video right is and i have mentioned this on this show and i strand strongly defend it uh if you're running like arch the whole internet says you shouldn't run arch so whatever um but i would say that a problem with that is there's a fair amount of op uh, distros that are based on arch uh garuda is the specific one that epos vox is talking about yep. uh, that have a lot of the same issues but are advertised to general audience i had garuda blasted to me a ton oh yeah i got a ton of recommendations a, for manjaro people are like where too. did you get the idea of using manjaro from all the people it was who one said of the highest voted ones on, on one of the polls from the people ran. who said that it was good because it was like more bleeding edge and better for newer hardware it's actually really interesting to see a lot of the talking points that get parroted about why we're having a bad experience it's because we don't have an amd gpu actually it has nothing to do with that or it's because we're running really exotic hardware the only thing in my setup that I think qualifies as exotic, now that I know that the Thunderbolt 3 dock works absolutely effortlessly, is my audio mixer. Everything else about my setup is like, what, what, exotic what? It's a Threadripper 3000, which is not a new CPU or platform by any stretch of the imagination. It's a 2000 series NVIDIA card. And that's, a, like, that's, a, that's not even a consumer chip, is it? Uh, it's a workstation chip, but like yeah. it doesn't matter. The point is just that it's a CPU from like, it was released like almost two years ago. Linux is all like tuned fairly well for workstation stuff. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, so I, I've got like, again, I've got like an 18 month old GPU. Um, and then beyond that, what makes a computer exotic? Yeah, I don't have anything exotic. Nothing. Yeah. Like I, like I see a lot of people just kind of going, oh, there's a problem, must be this thing I heard. But you have to actually look at what the problems are in order to find out if they're correlated with that like thing you heard about before um nick light is poking his head around the corner what can i do for you nick the mics are super super directional so they're not going to be able to hear you pretty much at all i'm just i'm trying to make sure you don't stay here all night you should start doing merch messages soon because there's a lot of them that are like oh okay yeah. all right i will i will have a look at that there's definitely a couple of topics we want to look at pretty quick here um evga oh sorry i still got to get this out about the arch thing he talks in his video about how there's sentiment on arch boards that updating your system is user error. Oh yeah. hundred percent. That's crazy. That's absolutely like, that's, that's crazy. If insane. you want, okay. And I've talked about this before. Yeah. If you're super, super hardcore, there being a distro for you is cool. Yes. And if updating is user error, because you should know what is in all of those updates. And if it causes a problem that's on you, that's fine in those super hardcore environments. I actually support that. That's totally cool. But when there's, when 
when there's other distros that don't have the red flags that Arch does. Yeah. Because they might even be based on Arch. That's a little rough. Yeah. Like, and then fragmentation becomes kind of weird because, like, why why are you even making Garuda? Why do you why do you exist? Or why are you why are you uh, advertising it in the way that you are? That might even be a different. Well, I mean, it's problem. you gotta. Words are a funny thing, right? We gotta avoid the word advertising because I, my understanding is nobody in or yeah yeah Garuda doesn't advertise. Is, Nobody's paying yeah. to to promote Garuda, so it becomes just this. Um, it becomes this really complicated sort of game of of uh, messenger. Or messenger, what's a telephone? It becomes this complicated game of telephone where you've got users who are understandably enthusiastic about the things that they love, um, creating narratives that just don't make any sense. Um, and like may maybe there is some really big reason for it. I, I have done zero, almost zero independent research on, on Garuda. I was just watching the Epos Vox video. Check it out. It's pretty good. I saw it um, recommended quite a few times. But yes, exactly. I got it recommended to me a bunch. And if I didn't do like tons of research into it, I might not have known that the community would have told me that updating my system was user error. <laughs> and if I knew that, I would have never used that distro. But it's not like Garuda is often not communicated with the same red flags that Arch has. And I think it, yep. it should be. I don't know. Whatever. Moving on. EVGA lost an entire truckload of GPUs to uh, bandits, essentially. Uh, so they said that they were stolen from a truck en route from San Francisco to their Southern California Disty Center. And the notice states the company is aware of each graphics card taken during the incident with individuals' values ranging from 330 US dollars to 2,000 US dollars. They were quick to note that it is a criminal and civil offense to buy or receive property that has been stolen. And they went a step further and actually canceled the warranties on all of the cards in the shipment. So they will not register or honor any warranty or upgrade claims on these products. So if you're buying an EVGA GPU online for the next little bit, maybe think twice unless you're getting it from a uh, reputable site. Now, discussion question here from Colin is, what do you think are the odds that these are just going to be sold off en masse to a mining operation? Uh, yeah, that is definitely, definitely what is going to happen to them. You don't accidentally steal a truckload of GPUs. You have some idea what the heck you're going to do with those when you're done. Our next topic, Facebook is deleting its book of faces. Just days after rebranding itself, Facebook announced plans to delete a trove of the facial recognition data that they've collected on more than a billion individuals. Meta's, I'm, I'm not calling it Meta, Facebook's VP of Artificial Intelligence says the social network was making the change because of many concerns about the place of facial recognition technology in society, adding that the company still saw the software as a powerful tool, but every new technology brings with it potential for both benefit and concern. Uh, yeah, that's a big. I wonder why Facebook actually got rid of it all. Yeah, it like purely because they want to be seen in a better light. So this uh, feature was called Deep Face, and it was actually introduced in December 2010 Deep to help meta. save time uh, tagging people in photos. It would automatically suggest people who appeared in a user's digital photo album, and you could just tag them with a click instead of typing a whole thing, which is like actually a pretty cool feature. And I can see why people would want to use stuff like that. So Facebook is deleting the data, but several of Meta's current projects show that the company has no plans to stop collecting data about people's bodies. Uh, Hyper-realistic avatars could be coming, which track your facial movements. Um, they've got a new VR headset that tracks the aforementioned facial movements and eye movement. They also... Wade, but didn't implement, incorporation of facial recognition into their Ray-Ban glasses collab. Okay, that is actually something that I would love to have as someone who's so bad with faces and names. Just like a pair of glasses that did absolutely nothing but pop up the name of whoever I'm talking to. I would, I would love that. Obviously, it's a privacy nightmare. Privacy that ain't happening. Issues with that, yeah. Ain't happening, but... It'd be kind of nice if it could learn off of local data. So you could like, let me add you to my contacts. Yeah, I mean, that I think would be less invasive, but I could still see people having concerns. But man, when I'd, I'd hit them trade shows, I'd be like, I know who you are. I know who you are. I actually don't, but my glasses do. <laughs> my glasses, remember? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Um, don't install that app. Craig says a criminal might be in it. Uh, this is from uh, Jonathan Horst. 
On Wednesday at Web Summit 2021, Software Senior Vice President at Apple, Craig Federighi, said in a keynote that sideloading is a criminal's best friend. <clears throat> you wouldn't sideload an app. Here's the quote. I want to address an argument I hear a lot. Let people choose whether or not to sideload. Let them judge the risks. But history shows us that it doesn't play out the way we'd hope because even if you have no intention of sideloading, people are routinely coerced or tricked into doing it. So if you want to install Pokemon Go on that old phone that it says it's not compatible on, even though it definitely works for sure, don't do it apparently. Could I be guess, a criminal. I mean, because he's, he might be a criminal. He's got a fair point. I can't sit here and go blah 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 the user experience user experience user experience it's it's a fair point here that the user experience could be bad if you're not an educated user i mean all you have to do i don't think do, that's the argument here at all how does that make any sense he's basically saying the user experience for a non-educated but it's user, not criminal well okay the pokemon go wouldn't be but like a cyber criminal could trick you into side loading an app fairly but does easily. that mean that it should be like banned or something like what's, what's well, that's the point? his argument yeah that's stupid i hate it all right it's because it's, it's, it's i think that like i don't know how this applies but this feels like in the same kind of line as right to repair like side loading is already very hidden on your phone it's not something you're going to naturally just do no, but it I is. would I would bet hard money that the vast, vast majority of people have never sideloaded an app. That's probably true. So who cares? This is not something that's affecting like the vast, vast majority of average random users. And it would be very annoying if it was impossible. Well, it is on iOS. Yeah, and it is annoying. Uh, this is really funny. Jonathan says, can we please stop referring to it as sideloading? It's installing. And we've been doing yeah. it for decades. Yes. Like, that's fair. That's like, fair. That, would, that would be like saying on, on, on Linux, you can't install things unless it's in the package manager now. Or on Windows saying like, oh, you know that Microsoft store that you probably don't like? You have to use it for literally everything now. I think that it could be as simple it's as annoying. Apple just putting roadblocks in place that go, you know, don't do this. But then if the Linux challenge has taught me anything, it's that users who aren't familiar <laughs> with the type of errors that a particular platform <laughs> spits out Yes, might listen not, to what I say. Yeah, yes, do as I say, or whatever the thing I had to type in was, might not realize what a big deal that error is. The number of people that are still kind of writing that is but kind of mind-blowing. You did that from the package manager, though. If, if installing an app on the iOS app store deleted your UI, I would say, yeah, maybe there's an issue with well, that, too. But this is this. is they're talking about sideloading. If you were doing something yeah. super advanced... That's that's different. Installing Steam through a package manager isn't like a super advanced action. There there's there should be no expectation there if your user experience isn't complete trash that it's going to like destroy your UI. What people are mad about is that it clearly said what it was going to do. Yeah, it also clearly said it also, a giant book worth of other stuff. Yeah, and it also most of the things that were very scary that it was removing were not things that an average user would even be able to read and understand what they are. Like if you look at it, take take off the take off the you know years of Linux experience that you have. You might not even know that DE is going to be short for desktop environment. Why would you know that? Why would anyone other than a Linux user be familiar with that terminology? Nobody else calls it that. Um, so anyway, switch modder Gary Bowser pleads guilty, owes Nintendo four and a half million dollars. Gary has admitted. Actually, I'm going to call him Bowser. Bowser has admitted. <laughs> that SXOS device's primary design was to play pirated ROMs and uh, was a part of a group called Team Excelsior. He was arrested last year in the Dominican Republic and then extradited to the United States. Admitted, executor? Sorry, extradited. Team Executor. Team Executor, sorry. Did I call it the wrong thing? Excelsior? <laughs> Did I call it that? Yeah. Oh, well, I, pff, that's, <laughs> like I said, very tired. Oh, good. Um, admits he knowingly and willfully participated in a cyber criminal enterprise that hacked leading gaming consoles and that he developed, manufactured, marketed, and sold a variety of circumvention devices between June 2013 and last year. Also created and supported ROM libraries. Nintendo alleges 65 to 150 million in losses from copyright infringement. Okay, Nintendo, it doesn't quite work that way. Um, 
and at one point actually released new Switch hardware that was designed to, to thwart these efforts, and Team Executor then made new devices that could be soldered onto the Switch's internal circuit board. I actually haven't really kept up with the whole Nintendo console modding thing now that it's so risky to mod it and they can yeah. like remotely brick your device. Um this is one of Nicholas's uh, Nicholas Plouffe's uh, discussion points here. Should we stop buying Nintendo games? How else will Nintendo realize it doesn't make sense to prosecute homebrewers when their first-party retro options suck? They do. They're really horrible. From a legal standpoint, no, we don't really have a leg to stand on. They are the rights holders, but from a from a just you know attitude gamer attitude standpoint i totally see where you're coming from ploof and i will not be buying any of nintendo's just uh, don't buy their retro retro stuff. switch stuff. i i honestly don't do that it's it, it's terrible uh you you mentioned the like most people aren't going to know what de means so the float plane chat started making like random guesses like desert eagle yeah d dust like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Anyways, got a couple more good topics here. Squid Game cryptocurrency was a scam. Rug pull. Plot so twist. You weren't able to to get money back out of it when you bought in, and then out of nowhere they just took everything. Get wrecked. Yep. Um, so that happened. And be careful if you're gonna mess around with cryptocurrency. This one's from Anthony, and he's mad. Okay. EA Sports, it's in the chain. Okay. Oh. EA CEO Andrew Wilson said during the most recent earnings call that NFTs and the blockchain are the future of the industry. Uh-huh. Anthony Young's take, no, they are effing not. And he specifically highlighted a couple of uh, keywords for me here. Uh, N, F, and T. Thank you, Anthony, for the steaming hot pile of take right there. Uh, EA hasn't laid any plans for how this will be accomplished, however. This is hot on the heels of Ubisoft's own plans to bring NFTs to its games just last week. Interestingly, Ubisoft talks of games using a play-to-earn model, which would dole out digital content to players for playing the games, presumably with longer playtime getting rare drops or something like that. Anthony goes, I can see, uh, I can't see any way this could backfire, as if I needed another reason to hate both of these companies. <laughs> uh, NFTs for the uninitiated are non fungible tokens. So it's a concept that ties ownership of a digital good to a ledger or to a blockchain in an effort to make the sale of digital assets more trustworthy. Here comes the Anthony rant. Do you want to read the Anthony rant? Sure. I'm mad. <laughs> This sounds great in theory, but there is a v- uh, that there is a very real problem with NFTs where artists, far from getting paid for their work, are having their work or even tweets converted to NFTs and sold by third parties. Sometimes pro- programmatically by bots, uh, it's being abused for pump and dump schemes and NFTs notoriously sell for ridiculous sums of money as a result. Uh, Several NFT games have launched and attempted to launch, uh, many with stolen art assets made into NFTs. Some even, I'm just ad-libbing this bit, but some even the cover art for the game, like one of the most obvious things that you don't even need to play the game to see has been stolen art, which is pretty epic. Um, It's unsurprising that EA Games uh, would want in, but in the meaning of the term as it exists today, I can't see this working out. Oh, and NFTs require a buttload of power because they typically use proof of work blockchains, which is a thing. Yep. Valve, for their part, wants nothing to do with NFTs and they have blocked cryptocurrency and NFT games from the Steam platform. And in response to Valve's ban, Tim Sweeney announced that Epic Game Store would welcome them after having criticized NFTs for exactly the same reasons that um, Anthony's rant exists. So, yeah, thank you for your unwavering principles, Mr. Sweeney. Um, but, hey. Um... I think NFTs are an interesting concept. I, I think the idea of having this, like, non-fungible thing, like this, like, extremely modern version of a, um, like, a certificate of authenticity, one of type of situation is a very interesting concept. Yeah. I think a lot of the ways that it's currently being used is ridiculous, um, abusive, and illegal. (laughs) Which is why we are focused on selling you guys physical goods. Oh, my word. Um, There's a few. This is a bit of a problem. We've got 142 merch messages that have rolled in over the course of the show. Hey, guys, thank you very much for your support. We are clearly not going to be able to read all of them, but I'm going to get through at least a few of them. We need to get a character limit on that, please. Got it. 
Aaron. That's a good point. Thanks to the WAN show and LTT, I've reignited my interest in IT. Heck yeah. Um, the banana is pog. All right, cool. Should we Pe- do like old school tweets, 120 characters? Wow, people are super into the bananas. Uh, y- yeah. Why don't, well, well, yeah, let's start with that and see how it goes. Uh, Jay. Said, not, not that J, different J. I bought a 2080 Ti a month before the 3000 series announcement. I felt torn ever since if I made the right decision. Yeah, you're fine. You could still sell that for more than you like paid for it at this point. Uh, Jareth says, Jareth got a stealth hoodie, a mystery t-shirt, reflective circuit t-shirt, two desk pads. Good gravy. What's the best way to clean the new spout lids? Um, I'd recommend getting one of those little um, like brush, the circular brush things. Um, also I would strongly recommend only putting water in water bottles just cause it's way, way easier to yeah. clean them. Uh, you can throw the lid in the dishwasher if you really wanted to, but do not put the bottle in the dishwasher. All right. Um, Tao says, how would you feel about your kids wanting to join Facebook or Instagram? Not yet. Not e- anytime soon. Uh, Paul, yes, we know the geek is back at Intel. It's a, it's a good thing. Uh, since I got a brand new PC, says Chris. Uh, Alexander, hi, longish time watcher of the channel. Bought an EVGA X99 board. I pr- oh, I bought the EVGA X99 board used in the OG mineral oil PC from an LTX goer on Reddit a while back. Unfortunately, two capacitors fell off in shipping what? when it arrived. I tried to what? fix it, but the Xeon I had to test with wasn't technically on the list of supported CPUs, and it didn't post. The previous user had it working, so not sure if it's my repair or the unsupported processor, but I was wondering if there's a good board repair service you could recommend or if you wanted to have a go at fixing it in a video or something. Cool. I can't promise you that we would want to do a video about that, and honestly speaking, I would say that an X99 board is probably not worth the cost of paying somebody else to do a repair for you to put a couple of caps back on. With that said, uh, maybe guys hit up the, oh, mm, go with maybe Twitch chat. That's a bit of slower moving than the YouTube chat. See if you can post some resources for Alexander for a good guide to how to recap a motherboard. Cody, I'm a PhD student working with semiconductors and quantum dots. Here's some money for all the help the quantum dot videos have given me to explain to people what I do. Hey, thanks, Cody. Got that banana for scale, Ethernet t-shirt. Uh, Patrick managed to grab one of the few remaining WAN show hoodies. Uh, some of these messages are chungus. Yeah, I might just not be able to do a lot of the really long ones. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, David. Um... Oh, wow. This is hilarious. David managed to buy $307 worth of stuff, like one of basically everything. Hi, Linus. One way to make the shipping cost to Europe better is to order bigger. (laughs) By the way, can you make the Linux streams you did with Luke on Twitch available as a VOD? They are on Floatplane somewhere. Sometimes they're hidden because there's a bit of a weird thing with our live VODs where it'll, if we stream twice in the same day, it'll post as two video files on the same post. So you might have to look at some WAN shows and see if there's a second video file for some of them. But I believe they are all on there. Do you want to start doing some of these too? Sure. Uh, Duval, uh, full full throttle 099 says, hi Linus. All right, cool. Uh, Finally purchased from LTStore.com. Been watching for 11 to 12 years now. Keep it up. I'm honored to be part of the community. Uh, Brian went hard, bought the entire Banana for Scale pack. I think it's called like bushel bananas or something. We made like a bundle for it. One of every color. One of every color. Um, also got three different lanyards and two spout lids and a beanie. That's got to be one of the most interesting orders like ever. Uh, <laughs> you said need a banana for scale for the scale bananas. This okay. is surprising. Ryan bought the banana bunch as well. So did Frank. More people than I could have pot Garrett. More people than I could have possibly expected are buying the banana bunch. They want all the bananas. Hand of banana. It's called hand of bananas. Thanks, Alexander and John Pierce. You know what? They actually, the name goes up there if they want to show their name anyway, doesn't it? So I don't probably need to do just like name shout outs, do I? Nope. Uh, Pierce asks though, is there an archive of the newsletter? I signed up, but I haven't gotten anything yet. Love the merch. Keep up the high quality. I have no idea. I guess that's something that we could like we maybe put as a blog form. on the page or something. Yeah, we could try, we could make we could make something for it. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good idea. 
Um, th- thanks, Pierce. Does that dissuade people from signing up for the newsletter? Uh, I th- don't think I care as long as they're like going on the site and checking it out and learning something. I mean, yeah, whatever, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, Nathaniel, could you guys sell a static grounding bracelet that doubles as like an everyday wear bracelet? That's kind of a cool idea too, isn't An it? An aesthetic? Sorry? No, nothing. Sorry. I, I, I love that idea. I think that's so cool. That's um, pretty neat. All right. You know what? I'm going to write that down, actually. It sounds like a design challenge, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I, well, the way that I imagine it is you would have it kind of detachable or something like that. So everyday wear. Uh, whoops. Oh, it's backspace. ESD bracelet. Yeah, I, I like it. That's a cool idea. Okay, what's next? Uh, will the Constellation shirt ever come back in stock? Yes. Thank you, John. Uh, thanks for all the great content. Thank you, Frank. Love the quality of your merch. It is possible to see. Is it possible to see? Oh, yeah. There's another person asking for previous versions of the leak. So okay. I think a lot of people must have liked the color theory one. And they want to see more, basically. Christopher, I waited a week to order just to see it pop up on the screen. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, I love it. Oh, Have you man. guys looked into making computer themed bi- uh, pin badges? Um, yes. Yeah. So we're we're working on sorry, pinned badge. You mean like pins, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're we're working on some pins. Uh, Sarah designed a GPU one that's going to be coming soon. Uh, I'm talking to Nick about what we can do for a lot of the time. Orders come with a free item. It's usually a pack of stickers. In fact, it's always a pack of stickers right now. But I want to explore whether our costs for pins could be low enough that we could actually make it your choice. Whether you want to get a sticker pack, a pin, or mm. maybe we could find like uh, like a fun little edible, like gamer gummies or something like that. Um, and you could actually choose what you want. And then we'll just make all those items available to buy. Like right now, you can't buy the sticker pack. And we've had some complaints about that. So um, we can make it. Like, and we've also seen people complain that they don't care about stickers. So making it people's option, whether they want the free item or what free item they want, I think could be kind of cool. At least one person in chat got my aesthetic pun. Oh, sorry. I just completely didn't hear you. It's okay. Um your products are amazing. I agree with 90% of what you guys do. 10% is a healthy difference. Uh, plush banana. I support this like Linus avoids challenges in Beat Saber. Signed, Nefanor. Thanks, Nefanor. Whoa. Ouch. Ouch. Got that fire. <laughs> uh, Francois says, looking forward to the M1 Max coverage. Yes, it's coming. And asks if gaming on macOS can take advantage of the horsepower. So my short circuit unboxing of the first M1 Max mac that i got my hands on i played me some uh oh bloody hell what's that game called deus ex um mankind divided okay yeah (laughs) pretty cool (laughs) (laughs) it's a gaming Uh, mac (laughs) william bought the entire banana for scale package and also an extra orange one um so it's every single color but two oranges that's epic uh, Neam's apparently been waiting for the WAN hoodie for six months. Yeah, I really shouldn't have started wearing this on camera so early. Uh, Nick got mad at me about how early I was wearing the thing. But it certainly resulted in like crazy demand. We already sold through almost all of our 4,000 units. Um, they're just, they're gone. Uh, we've never seen anything quite like it. Hayden says, thanks for selling the lid separate. I've had my water bottle for almost two years and the original lid finally broke. Um, I look forward to trying a new one. Uh, yeah, so we're also exploring other lid options, and I think at some point in the future, we'd love to uh, see if there's a way to turn it into like a configurator. Uh, one of the cool things that Luke's team has been working on is a configurator for the desk pad. Yeah. Is there any way for us to show that to them uh... conveniently or no? But basically, you enter the dimensions of your desk, and then you can select your desk pad, and it'll show you how good of a fit that desk pad will be for your desk. It's super rudimentary now, but I, I find that particularly because uh, the measurements are in millimeters and in North America, a lot of desks are in inches. We've seen people kind of have a hard time, at least mentally, visualizing how big that pad is going to look on their desk. And we want to make that a little bit easier for people. You keep going. I'm trying to get it. Thanks, Neam. Uh, thanks, Kevin, too. Got my WAN hoodie today, along with LTT water bottle for my nephew, stocking up on some more gifts for the holidays. Heck yeah. Uh, Dustin says, Anthony 
slash Linux Fox plush when and Anthony plush. Yeah, there's no reason we would only do a Linus plush. I think we could do like some runs of uh, some other plushes. One of the things that I've worried about doing anyone other than me is um, that I don't want it to seem like we're playing favorites and I don't want to turn it into like a political thing. This is something we talked about back when we had thought about doing, you know, like U2s, um, like those little plastic figurines. Um, we had thought about contracting a factory to make some of those for us. And one of the things that we just kind of couldn't get past was who do we do them for? How do we avoid this turning into like a weird popularity contest where someone gets their feelings hurt because theirs doesn't sell very well or whatever. And we just like, forget it. Just don't do it. Um, Adam asks, how much performance am I leaving on the table at 1440p with a 4790k and a 3070? I mean, honestly, you'd get some benefit from upgrading your CPU at this point, especially with the new launch. But you're also not at 1440p, you're going to be GPU bound in some games. I don't think it's the end of the world. I think the, the, the honest answer every time someone asks me, okay, should I upgrade is, well, what's wrong with it, right? Is there some kind of, of bottleneck that is, that is hurting your gaming experience in a, in a meaningful way? And if not, then, I mean, there's, there's no reason to um, just generate more electronic junk, right? A 4790K is still a good chip. It's a good chip. It's fast. Uh, I don't share your screen. I, I emailed you the desk pad configurator stuff. Um, download the files and then play them. Also, maybe I should watch it first to make sure there isn't anything in there, but I don't think there is. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? This is, this is a very early, like, there's a reason why it's it's not on the store yet. Um people so not it's, done. it's not perfect yet but this is kind of the the concept that we're that we're going for Jaden says can you please make shipping cheaper come on i want to i would love to it's just really hard because we don't control shipping prices <laughs> um Haley says hi colton among other things hey thanks Haley. uh lee bought the banana pack all right the banana bunch, I guess we could call it. Um, hey, you're welcome, Anonymous, for the high-quality merch. James says, it's my birthday. This is a present to myself. Got the 1.2 meter by 30 centimeter Northern Lights desk pad. Heck yeah. Yeah, should be fine. Aiden, minus as a user of Unraid, does it bug you that years on, you can't customize the web GUI horizontally? Oh, man, I love the Unraid guys. They're great, great people. But there are many things that bother me that are not fixed after years. Um, I love them. They're wonderful. Jacob says, trans rights, bought a purple banana. Heck yeah. Uh, Patrick says, interesting time with Alder Lake. I help people with computer problems for free, and I recently built my thousandth PC. Wow, you keep track of that. That's pretty cool. That would be a cool, that is like, pretty cool. what I've a cool wall wondered. collage yeah. that would be. Oh, a picture of Like each a one? picture of every computer you've built or something. That would be pretty sweet. Oh, that would be so cool. I wish I had pictures of, like, the first computer I built and stuff. I, there's no, nothing, nothing at all. Looking forward to the S2 tool steel bit screwdriver later? Yeah, you better believe it. Uh, Martin... I've been watching the WAN show since it was recorded on That's the couch. Uh, yeah, that is a lot of shirts. It's like one of every shirt and a water bottle. <laughs> Question. Back on the couch, you explained you were saying same bad time, same bad channel. Ah, okay. No, it was never same bat time, same bat channel like the old Adam West Batman. It was always bad time, bad channel. Oh, wait, no, I might have actually said bad you time, said bad, bad channel. I think I was, yeah, I think it was just a reference. You used to say bat and now you say bad. Now it's bad because the show is always late. That's right. There's your answer. Yeah. Um, and I just, I like, I like the reference. It's a funny show. You actually confused me at one point. Yeah. Because I started realizing you were saying bad and I was like, wait, what? Because I remember this same explanation that Martin is bringing up. Anatoly's comment is, I would like my purchase to appear as an alert on the LTT stream. Anatoly, mission accomplished. Got him. <laughs> Love nice. it. Ah, okay. Um, new Constellation shirt when, asks Zach. I know, I know. So we have our first shipment of our own t-shirts, not American apparel ones. We're taking it slow on this because the quality of our shirts is one of the things that people rave about. And it's so funny because 
they're just American apparel tees. It's just that every other merch shirt uses garbage t-shirts. Yeah. That's the only reason ours stand out. These are just off-the-shelf American apparel tees. But the problem we have with them is that we can't get enough supply. Otherwise, we would have just continued to buy American apparel. So we've been trying to find our own shirts that match or exceed the quality of American apparel. We think we have it. We did a volume order. But we're, we're taking a look at them. We're doing test prints. It's going to take some time. When we're done... We're going to have Black Aqua-ish as a color again. We are going to bring back Constellation. I don't know if it'll be a V2 or if we'll do the original design, at least as one run for people who missed it. But it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Thanks, Andrew. Oh, my gosh. They are coming in faster than do I you can wanna, read them, Do you want to bring up the problem. configurator, and I'll keep firing through these? What number are you on? I'm on 62. We're going to have to start doing this as like an after party, I think. Maybe. So we just cut the show and then we like come right back and we're like, hey, let's let's go through like Q&A and just stuff. Just not on YouTube maybe? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. With yeah. that said, retention on this is actually like excellent. We are answering questions that people might be interested in. Like, yeah. It's kind of a Q&A at the end of the show. Like, I don't know. It might, might be fine. This is my first LCT purchase since the Keep On Digging shirt of few years back i think it's a little more than a few years back <laughs> that was uh, like seven years ago <laughs> uh, i've been a big fan since 2014 and i have watched most wan shows since then epic nice um uh no it was ubisoft <laughs> they keep on digging shit. yeah yeah okay right, i've right. got luke's uh thingamaboober here i don't sh is that the email oh what? you download it thank you okay so again extremely early version this is mostly proof of concept it is not going to look like this it will have a better user experience ui kind of setup thing we're just showing that you can you can change the size <laughs> of the desk um to to like an, an an input amount so you can input the size of your desk and it will change the the canvas to to kind of work for the size of desk that you have um, how'd you put the keyboard and mouse in hmm? how'd you put the keyboard and mouse in I don't see a keyboard and mouse. There's a keyboard. Oh, on the mouse pad? Oh, is that just part of the mouse pad image? I think so. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes so sense. So we're we're I, I think I've requested it, but it's like on the office server, so I keep forgetting to get it. We're supposed to get like the source images for the mouse pad so that it looks cool. better and stuff. And it will look nicer, blah, 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 blah. But the idea is you can put in the dimensions of your desk and then trial a bunch of official sizes of the mouse pad to figure out exactly what mouse pad you want the most. So it'll look nice, it'll work better, etc. But that functionality is coming to the store, which I think is gonna be great. Oh, it's a screenshot from the LTD store. So we're gonna get better versions. Again, it's a very early version of that that stuff. Got it. Um, okay. Benjamin, I really went the WAN hoodie. Hey, thanks, hey. Benjamin. <laughs> Note, note, notey, McNote, note, Luke is awesome, says Justin. Hey, thanks. You know what we might have to do? A better way to tackle this might be to just have a live producer filtering them and then just have the messages be part of the merch message and just have it pop up. As long as we've got a character limit and we design a thing that like has bounds that kind of makes sense. That does get um, more complicated. Uh, they could also pull like specific kind of questions that we can answer at the end of the show out and stuff like that yeah but, yeah Might be the problem with adding a producer to this show though is that it kind of happens on such a um random schedule like nobody's in office right now luke and i are the only ones in the building <laughs> yeah, i don't think anyone wants to stay um, um anonymous says the top handle on that backpack prototype looks thin padding maybe oh no 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 okay Th thin maybe maybe but it is strong um it is double layered and then just has like stitching down the middle for absolute lols because we were like, add more stitching. <laughs> it is not going anywhere. Jacob says, Jay loves K very much. Hey, we're doing the like romantic shout outs on the WAN show now. Congratulations on popping your LTT store cherry, Micah. Um, Josiah says, have you done a video to build a mid-range server? We actually have one coming soon that's going to be about repurposing your old desktop to make it into a server. I think Pulseway sponsored it, so that's cool. Anatan says, shout out to my girlfriend, Sarmishta, who loved the look of the gold water bottle. Heck yeah. And includes, uh, oh, a gold black and gold water bottle for the GF. Love it. Ashley says, take my money. 
I will buy a fully loaded backpack. My expectation would be 200 to 300 USD for such a package. I can give you guys some pricing guidance now that we've done this latest sample. Uh, there's going to be a few more changes, but you can expect that the backpack will probably be in the neighborhood of 250 US dollars. It is not going to be cheap. It's just for the backpack. So that the is, fully loaded bundle, if that became a thing. It could be around 300. I think we could offer some bundle savings if it was like a shirt. Oh, not the screwdriver. Water. No, cost on the screwdriver is rough. Okay, yeah, maybe like water bottle and a shirt would be the package that Might we could do. Might be a little do. bit more reasonable. So yeah. we'll, let's see what we can do. But the so far, the people that I've shown it to, and that includes Brandon, David, and Colin, um, some of them in particular, actually, I think all of them have really nice backpacks that they have spent a lot of money on, and they're like, pretty good looks good yeah. Um, yeah nice backpacks are really expensive like genuinely really good backpacks are very expensive brandon says the thing. banana <laughs> all right thanks brandon <laughs> it's a different brandon not our brandon but yeah uh martin can we get a video about the difference between msrp and retail prices so many people are fighting and getting ripped off ripped off because nobody knows yeah i mean i don't think that's a whole video but msrp is a suggested retail price and retail prices are just like the price so that's that's the big difference. Um, got the wife to watch the show with me. She saw the bananas and had to have them, says Robert. You know what's funny is I can't remember if it was Nick or Sarah or both of them. I pushed back on the bananas. I was like, I don't know. I, this is kind of like a weird a weird product to me. Like I know banana for scale is like a total meme and everything, but it's not one that we've leaned crazy heavy into or anything like no, that. No. And they were like, no man, trust me. And I was like, oh, okay. All right. Honestly, when I, when I saw these, we had, we had to do some full plan had to do a little bit of work to, to make the, the bundle thing work. Right. Uh, when I saw these and like, I know nothing, I'm not the merch guy. Right. Like, don't listen to me. But I saw this and I was like, wow, I hope we didn't buy a ton of them. But now I kind of hope they did buy a ton of them because yeah. apparently they're flying off. Because if we didn't buy a ton of them, we're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. The amount of people that are buying all of them yeah. is really interesting to me too. I, I, I think there's like just as many or, or, or maybe even more people that are buying the entire set of bananas Bunch. than just one of them. All right. Um, no problem. Ari, uh, Rune, I guess I accidentally... Um <clears throat> I accidentally answered your question already. Haha. -ha. Uh, Renee, greetings from Chile. Following your channel for years. Oh, oh, Jono. Jono just messaged me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It was me. All right, all right. Jono's apparently one of the banana since like 2018. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. We got to give credit where credit is due. Michael says, old guy with poor eyesight. What's the best monitor type slash technology? For poor eyesight. Wow. That is a good question. I mean, I want to say garbage in, garbage out. You're going to want to make sure that you get a monitor with like a really fine, uh, uh, with, uh, with high pixel density. But other than that, I could see, I could see avoiding something that inherently has more glow. You might not like an IPS as much. The thing is that part of the glow effect though is actually um, the way that your eyes take in light. So even OLEDs, which might have a pixel off and then a pixel on right next to each other, they can still have a perceived glow to them. So also, I, again, know nothing on this topic. I would maybe recommend not an OLED uh, because I, I think the difference between it might actually make things hard to see. Yeah, but then you're also not going to want no contrast. You're not going to want a TN yeah. either because yeah. that's going to be well, really hard to deal with. Yeah, it's just garbage. I mean, honestly, I'm not educated enough to make a solid recommendation there. Um, but if I to had to dog. guess, I would say a happy medium might be something VA-based. Hmm. If I had to guess. I'm guessing. Guessing. Guessing, Linus. Uh, Jacob says there's a category literally called hard in the store. LTT condoms confirmed. I do not want that liability. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Anonymous. Wow. Got to kick me while I'm down. I saw on the WAN show a while back that you thought the gold Xbox controller videos would go viral. Man, you should have just made another RC fire truck review. Would have been 10 mil views easy. You should try to, you should try to find like the coolest 
RC fire truck video and make like a number two. Um, I Just have for the meme. some ideas for like a follow up to that. Nothing solid. Nothing solid though. Nice new shirts. Thanks for occupying eighty percent of my wardrobe. I should, I should film it. Key. Just for, to complete the. Just for the memes. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Um, Bridget says my lid broke for my twenty one ounce. Oh, got a new lid. I see that. Um, man, we've had some of those out there so long that like it is the like we're, spine connector on the yeah, lid. Yeah, we're is starting just to really old. We're starting yeah. to see people with that, that amount of break. movement on it after years of if potentially daily use. Yeah, I yep. can see it. Um, but, uh, Bridget's picked up one of the new spout lids, got the nice. do not drop t-shirt, got a yellow banana. Also, when are women's sizes and cuts coming to LTE store? Okay. We are working on it. So step one is getting t-shirts and long sleeves of our own design with our own materials that we're happy with. Once we do that, step two is working on our female cuts, our lanky boy and chunky boy cuts. Um, probably figuring out alternative female cuts. Like we've got a whole roadmap. We really want to make sure that not only for LTT merch, but in the long term, Creator Warehouse wants to open up to uh, being a merch provider for other creators as well. So we want to figure out how to have like crazy inclusive sizing. Uh, that's just one of our sort of long term goals. And um, we're going to at some point, it's not hasn't happened yet, but it will. We're going to reach out to our community to kind of um, jo to join the guinea pig squad and we'll take community feedback on all these like different sizes because that's one of the things that's really challenging for men's yeah. clothes. Just like you've got enough dudes, you know, like tech bros in this building that it's pretty easy to find like a lanky boy or a, or a heavy boy to, to try something on and, and give feedback to the fit technicians. But um, for female cuts, we, we don't, we don't have the kind of variety of body shapes that we would need. So we're going to, we're going to have to figure that out. It's going to be challenging, but we will, we will do it. It's just a matter of time. And uh, if you guys watched the framework laptop investment video, you'll know that one of the big challenges with physical goods is that you have to keep, whenever you do new product development, you are pouring in money that is way more than you can hope to extract from the product that you're going to ex to sell for months and if your sales volumes increase the amount of money that you have to put in could actually be net bigger than the profit that you're making selling through all your product so uh yvonne and i were actually looking at this the other day net cash flow ltt store is way more than a million dollars in the hole this year we sell every product profitably but you're like setting up more stuff and scaling but up. We are and constantly developing yeah. new products that yeah. we have to pay sampling fees for. We have to pay deposits. We have to order them. Sometimes they can take literally months to arrive. And um, then when it's time to reorder, like WAN hoodie. Okay, WAN hoodie is such a great example. So let's use nice round numbers. And let's, let's, say, uh, let's say our profit was 50%. Let's say it was. Um, it's really not that simple, but um, WAN hoodie. If we ordered four thousand units and we sold through them in ten days, uh, I, I guess we'll probably be up to about eleven or twelve days by the time the last unit goes off the shelf in the last size. Um, that tells us that between production time being like four to six weeks and shipping time being another six to eight weeks, that we need to now reorder. 15 times as many or 12 times as many. So let's say, let's say we were making 50% margin, which again, I, I'm only using that for nice round numbers. We are now dumping in um, 11 times more profit than we made. Yeah. Just in order to restock this bloody product. So it's like, I'm not, I'm not asking for any sympathy. It's great. You guys are amazing and supportive and LTT store has been amazing and the team is amazing and everything is, everything is great. It's like, um, it's been a total game changer for us, man. We're, we've got a, we've got a hiring video coming out soon. We're going to be showing off a new space. Um, we're going to bring in, I want to really lean into engineers. Oh, the accounting department asked me to shout out the accounting position again, guys, if you have an accounting background, um, please go check out um, linusmediagroup.com. We've got a position posted there. 
Anyway, the point is we've, I want to really lean into uh, more engineers, bringing in more engineers for our staff um, with that upcoming hiring video. And I think that it is fair to say that LTT store and the support that you guys are showing is going to be a huge part of what's going to allow us to do that. Obviously it hasn't generated positive cash flow for us yet, but it will. And it gives me the confidence to invest and hire these additional people and like get this, get this thing going. Have you filmed that video yet? I haven't yet. Okay. Just want to make sure that the postings are right. Um, Preston says, hey, quick question. I got water bottle V2 and I had to buy another lid after a week because the handle hinge part of the cap shears. So we haven't had a lot of complaints about that, but you shouldn't have bought another one. You should have contacted customer support. They will send you another one. Um, they they really do a great job. Their priority is making sure that everyone's happy. So what I want you to do, Preston, is reach out to support and get that order refunded for the replacement lid. Because um, customer support's got to know if we have like a quality control uh, issue on a, on a particular batch of water bottles as well so that we can track that kind of thing. That's how we tracked down the recall that we ultimately did on, oh, I'm not actually wearing it, on V1 of the two Kerbini. Um, Anonymous says, award for the world's longest shipping from the lower mainland to the faraway world of the lower mainland. Okay. One of these days, I will explain how our shipping system works, and it is optimized for global logistics because most of our products ship globally, not domestically, and it does slow down our domestic shipping. I'm sorry. <laughs> we do need to keep going through these or or like end it. Hamish says, buying this book for my baby boy, Caden. Heck yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. We're going to have to, we're going to have to call it here pretty quick unless I see some ones that are like, uh, really, um, like a good question that people really need the answer to. Cause Luke and I need to go home at some point here. Do, 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 do. Nathan asks, will there be an option to buy replacement bits for the screwdriver? Yes. Um, not only will we have replacements of the bit load that we provide by default, but we are going to have clips that you can buy of like Torx in every size, hex in every size. So you can actually build out your own bit load. And we are targeting very reasonable pricing with the additional Linus Tech tips. Uh, very nice. Very um, nice. We probably won't call them that, but uh, we are targeting a, a, a really fair price point. It's not super aggressive, but it's very fair. So it should be no problem for people to kind of go, okay, yeah, I'll pick up the screwdriver and then just kind of grab anything that I would want. And then I can build my own perfect optimal bit load. Um, hey, shout out to Floatplane from Johan. Why do you use Plex and not Jellyfin or MB? I've actually truthfully never tried Jellyfish or MB and I have a lifetime Plex membership. So there's no real reason for me to try something else. I've been pretty happy with it. Carl says, I agree with David. Bigger orders are cheaper for shipping to Europe. And he got every single banana, a water bottle, uh, t-shirt, 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 lanyard, desk pad. <laughs> nice. Uh, Tanner says, it hurt when you talked down on the Duo 2 a few WAN shows ago, saying your viewers are smart enough not to get it. I've been pretty hyped about it for a while, personally. Anyway, my Fold 3 just came in a couple days ago. It's awesome, and I'm loving it. I, I do think you made the right choice. I think the, the folding screen is going to be a better experience than the, the hinge, like, dual display uh, portable device. Okay. Oh, interesting. Nicholas has a PSA about the Best Buy membership. So it's being advertised at $13 a month with the same Geek Squad services, plus setting up and removing bloatware. Having shopped there before, I was curious if their protection turns out for four years protection through the full price, you pay 450 CAD. But if you didn't know any better and sign up for the Geek Squad membership, you're paying over $600 for the same four years and basically the same service. So you should get the, uh, the like Best Buy membership instead. Thanks, Nicholas, and thanks okay. for the order. Okay. Zeb says, after experiencing Linux for a while, how confident are you feeling about Linux shipping with the Steam Deck? Um, if their goal is to have 100% of the games in the Steam library working, uh, how long are they? They're planning on shipping it like next month? Soon. Unless there's a big update, they're failing. So. Okay, I'm going to actually share a rosier perspective. I'm feeling pretty good about it because my biggest problem has never been that it's impossible. 
my biggest problem has been that there's workarounds and uh, you know launch flags and dependencies, blah, 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 blah. So as long as Valve's doing all the work, okay. My thing is if they do the work though, that's the, and it seems like they're kind of, you know, probably going to, they've said they will. Um, it's not there yet, at least publicly. Maybe there's like some big Proton update coming. I don't know. Um, but there's, there's still issues. And a lot of those issues come in with DRM stuff, right? Like almost every game that I've found that isn't going to work or doesn't work, there's a DRM issue. But like, I don't know if they can solve that. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Uh, but there was a claim that they'd get the whole library working and that looks a little sketchy right now. I, I'm still really stoked for my purchase. I think it's gonna be great. Uh, Jake, you're right. The command line is definitely worth learning at least a little bit about, 100%. Okay. It depends who you are. Um, I think knowing a cup, knowing, n not being scared of it is a good thing. Yeah, but like if you, if you use your computer to play League of Legends and Counter-Strike two days a week for fun. Okay, then. Do you yeah, need to learn the command line? No. Uh, Carl says, I agree with David. Bigger orders are cheaper on shipping to Europe. <laughs> All the bananas, water bottle. Bunch of shirts, lanyard, <laughs> desk pad. All right, fair enough. Um, Anonymous says, I cannot believe you didn't call them wanyards. We're working on that. Oh. So black and orange. Cool. Yeah. So far, they've been only single color. Yeah. Um, Anonymous says, the ability to wear your merch and have the brand be known by those who know while not looking like a giant advertising billboard is always appreciated. That's actually been a big shift for us. A lot of our earlier merch was like Linus Tech Tips all over it. And over time, um, starting with the Stealth hoodie, that was actually where the name came from, Stealth Branding. We've wanted to make it more just like clothes that are affordable and quality and, and that we, anyone would want to actually wear. And we knew that because we've been going to cons forever and the best merch that you could ever get from anybody was the stuff that was, yeah, maybe some people would recognize it, but it wasn't like totally in your face. 100%. Okay, sorry guys, I can't do any more of these. Um, you guys are absolutely amazing. We got 183 merch messages on the show today. Wow. Um, thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Josh. Okay, we had a couple more roll in just now. I think that's it for the show today. Oh, actually, there were a couple of super chats that I really cannot ignore. Uh, someone sent a $100 super chat, so I should probably have a look at that those people should probably start doing merch messages because we have we have said we're not yes gonna super please no, i didn't say it today um daryl says ltt backpack in the shape of a penguin one appendage could be an ltt water bottle one could be an ifixit kit one compressed air and the other for a usb hard drive the body could fit your laptop <laughs> you know what i you know what i that uh <laughs> image you know what image that conjures for me those like animal shaped backpacks that like eight year old girls wear. <laughs> I kind of love it, but I don't <laughs> think we're going to develop that. Um, M Hoffman says, what do you really think about the Odyssey Neo G9? We actually meant to do a follow up non-sponsored review of it. Um, and I haven't gotten to that. I really should do that. So I tried to find an unsponsored review, but couldn't. I still haven't tried a production unit. Right. I remember the delay was that the production ones weren't out yet when I put it on, tr uh, on Trello. Um, Daryl Lyle says, uh, the biggest issue with the Linux challenge is the fact that you think no one should use the command line. Well, in Windows, I have to install various programs to understand why it crashes. I don't see that as being any different, except with Linux, the commands are there. Um, well, I'm not saying no one should use the command line. I'm saying no one should have to, to do what they want to do on their computer. That's the difference. And by no one, I mean average gamer, right? Because this is supposed to be as gamers that we're, that we're going through this challenge, not as you know by day developers who happen to play some games we're talking people who identify as a gamer right um daryl says regardless of us linux users complaining thank you for doing the challenge this will help linux even if your feedback's all negative hey thanks we're, we're trying we really are like we're, we're we came into it wanting to support mainstream adoption of linux that's where our heart is at and we've run into some challenges that have led us to believe that no it is in fact not ready for prime time for gamers just yet but that's part of the process, right? You have to find all the things that are bad in order to um, consolidate down to just things that are good. And is that where we call it? Uh, it can be. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. 
Bye. Ah, okay. Sounds alive. good, Conrad. Sounds good, Conrad. That makes sense. Keep it as is. I agree. Brought to you by Spanning, MSI, and Rich Wallet. Yay!